Salutations. Welcome to Pod Mortem. I'm Travis Hunter, joined as always by my co-host, my sister, and my brother-in-law. Hi, I'm Renee Hunter Vasquez. Hi, I'm John Paul Vasquez. This week, we're broadcasting live from the Monroeville Mall, discussing the 1978 horror classic, Dawn of the Dead. This film was written and directed by George A. Romero. Dawn of the Dead is the second entry in Romero's original Dead trilogy, serving as a follow-up to the 1968 classic, Night of the Living Dead. With a larger scope and slightly increased budget, Dawn of the Dead not only boasts impressive special effects, but offers potent social commentary on American consumerism against the backdrop of the zombie apocalypse. Proving a hit at the box office and with critics alike, Dawn of the Dead remains a genre staple and is widely considered a horror classic. This film was recommended to us by friend of the show, Daniel Wemiz. Daniel runs the Gory Bits channel over on YouTube, which you should definitely subscribe to if you aren't already. Thank you to Daniel for his support, as well as this suggestion. So, Dawn of the Dead, what were your first impressions on the film? Um, this was the first time I've seen the movie all the way through. I've seen bits and pieces of it, but uh-huh. I've never watched the entire thing. I'm more uh, accustomed to the 2004 version. Oh, okay. And I love that movie. This was not that movie. <laughs> this was fun on its own, because mm-hmm. like the stories aren't really exactly the same. But this movie I did enjoy a lot. I will say that, uh, I mean, the 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 age shows. You know it, what it, I mean? It does. Um, but it was really good. It was fun. Uh, it's a. Uh, I think that it's a, a horror comedy. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And it's very funny. It's a ve- <laughs> there's very funny parts. There are some parts that are like laugh out loud. I had to pause a few times because I couldn't <laughs> stop laughing. And it's definitely funnier than Night of the Living Dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. There was like there was no that was no laughing. Night. No, yeah. not at all. Um, I would say that I agree. I feel like we don't usually agree up at yeah. the top, but this time we do. I know I have to have seen this at some point before, mm-hmm. but I really can't think of a time where I just sat down and watched this complete film until now. Right. And the beginning is so grim mm-hmm. that I was like, oh shit, this is going to be like, this is a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But as it goes on, there are some aspects that were really fucking like hilarious <laughs> <Yeah>. and ridiculous <laughs> more. I mean, not, it's not obviously not like a straight comedy and there right. is still a lot of gore and a lot of sad stuff that happens along the way, but there's some fucking silly shit. <laughs> but I will say that I, I'm ready for the hate comments for how much I love Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, this isn't that. Yeah, no. Uh, Rather, that isn't this. Okay, yeah. Um, (laughs) Are you trying to save face a little bit? Yeah. uh, (laughs) Why'd your voice get so shaky? (laughs) (laughs) I I myself prefer uh, the other version over this. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, that one just it, it holds a, a special place as well. I don't yeah, I don't know why it's one of those movies that I've seen about eight hundred times. I don't know why, uh, but it's fantastic. This was not what I was expecting, and how fun it ended up being. Yeah, but it's just good. Like mm-hmm. it's just it's a lot of what you sign up for. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and I feel like me kind of expecting Night of the Living Dead. And then it kind of starting like that. And I I kind of feel like the rug was pulled out from under me. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I'm not mad about it. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it's fine. Yeah. The tone that they started with, it would have been hard it's to keep oh, that yeah. up. For fucking two hours, yeah. I'm like, I need a drink or something. <laughs> God damn. I think like both of you, I saw the remake first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then again, I think if it came out 2004, I'm like 13 years old. Yeah. Right. It kind of was a zombie film made for me. Right, yeah. right. I At mean, the time. maybe that it just hit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, and uh, there's a lot of nostalgia tied in with the 2004 version. Mm-hmm. But for me, I think I love them both for different reasons. Right. Well, they're very different. Right, right. Like the remake is very Zack Snyder situation. Yeah. yeah. For better or worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, nobody's saying it's nobody's, perfect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But I think this film has like, and like you said, where you said that it kind of shows its age. Yeah. To me, I think there's a lot of charm in that. Yeah. There, there is. But I mean, like I've said before, I'm, I wouldn't say a snob, but I've, I like what I like, mm-hmm. and it's not like saying anything bad about the movie, 
but charm is the right word uh-huh. but it, it, it kind of i was just like oh man you know what i mean <laughs> it was just weird because i was like, like you said the 2004 one we know uh-huh. so me watching that and then watching this and i'm like these are not the same i was like one is not like the other uh-huh. uh yeah, definitely and, not but I, I but this was what 78 yes and it for the time that was great but yeah now seeing it through everything looks like marvel movies now it's like <laughs> oh man you know what i mean mm-hmm. i think that it didn't hurt it for me but it, it it was noticeable because of me being spoiled from cgi and practical effects nowadays mm-hmm. but i didn't stop from the movie being fun well that's i mean yeah. i think that's good <laughs> yeah. yeah he's like this isn't fucking no, you know, yeah. that's-, <laughs> like, that's not a real zombie <laughs> I think, and of course, with fucking Tom Savini. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We all love Tom. Like, of course. Not only Sex doing, yeah. of course, not only doing the makeup, but being in the fucking oh, film. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's you know we had plot. to. Yeah. yeah. It's a good thing every single time. I did want to talk about a couple of things, though, up top. The first of which is how fucking hard it is to get a copy of this. Mm-hmm. I didn't know the backstory until I watched the video from Dr. Wolfila. Yeah. But I know from our experience, we were like, this is not streaming anywhere. Mm -mm. And we were kind of trying to find it. And then we eventually found it on YouTube, Mm -hmm. which I'm I'm not saying to go watch it or anything, but it is there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're also not not saying. Yeah. We are. (laughs) Whatever legally saves us from (laughs) shit. Right. All right. (laughs) But as it turns out, the producer of the film, Richard Rubenstein, he apparently owns the rights to Dawn of the Dead. Mm -hmm. And he, I believe, later on, years later after this was made, sunk like $6 million into creating a 3D version of this film. (laughs) And I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. He expected like... Oh, man. He wanted everyone to be interested in seeing a 3D version, but this is not really the film for that. not at all. (laughs) And so he's like fucking annoyed and pissed off that he wasted all that money. Right. And so... (laughs) like leasing the rights to people to be able to stream it right right. he's charging exorbitant amounts of money oh fuck out of here man. and that's why you can't stream yeah. it anywhere and so that's the other thing about it being on blu-ray and dvd mm-hmm. the copies that are available are pretty fucking expensive yeah damn like i think i saw a blu-ray that was like a hundred and something dollars Ooh. a dvd that was like 60 or 70 yeah so they're, they're collector's items well, well yeah, I mean, where we are, we've it's kind of become a running joke on this show, but uh, we're poor as hell. Yeah, <laughs> and so, no, so yeah. we watched it on YouTube. Yes, yeah. we did. <laughs> as we explained, we pulled up the YouTube. <laughs> but I mean, I just I can't believe that. And Doctor Wolfield put it best. He's like, this is a film that everyone should see, mm-hmm. and this motherfucker is keeping a lot of people from seeing it. Yeah, and uh, it's very annoying. Mm-hmm. But the story of its production is very interesting as well. Mm-hmm. George A. Romero initially did not want to make another dead movie. Right. He made Night of the Living Dead. Mm -hmm. They didn't make a lot of money for it because of the whole copyright issue. Right, right. And so he made like three, four more films. He made a fucking documentary about O.J. Simpson, which (laughs) I don't know how well that (laughs) is. About about the sports, not about the murder. No, just like the juice. (laughs) (laughs) But this is pre-murder. Pre-murder, yeah. because we, I mean, we all know. Well, hold on, he didn't do it. Uh, what if? What if? It. Yeah. If, if he did if, it. We have a whole book it. about it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he was actually friends with the people that owned the Monroeville Mall. Okay. And so he went to tour it with them, and they were like, yep, this place could withstand a nuclear blast. <laughs> And he's like, huh. He's like, oh, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about like, some zombies? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the idea is planted. Yeah. And so he writes a script. But then it wasn't until Dario Argento, uh-huh. the Italian filmmaker, was touring the US to promote his film Suspiria, which is one of my fucking favorites. Right. As soon as I saw his name in the credits, I was like, T's going to have a whole story uh, about this. I knew this. I had to. He uh, met Romero. Mm-hmm. They became friends. And then later on, he was like, hey, what do you think about doing a sequel to Night of the Living Dead? Right. And Romero's like, eh, you know, all right, I I guess. And so he fucking flies Romero and his wife out to Rome Mm -hmm. and puts them up in an apartment for like three weeks and they write the screenplay. Oh, shit. Well, he was serious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, He, I think his deal was he's like, if I get the right to cut a European version of this Mm -hmm. film, you guys can do all this and they make that deal. Right. And so that's why whenever this film came out in Europe, it right. was called Zombie. It had a different title. <laughs> and that's why there's Zombie 2, Zombie yeah. 3, right. and all that stuff oh, that are, all right. it's like their own it's little own film series. Right. 
uh, Romero said in an interview, there's like 10 different cuts of this film. God damn. Because I guess there's a lot of like weird censorship. And yeah, different, yeah. So like he kind of had to do the theatrical one that they made for the US and then Argento did the one in Europe and then there's just random fucking ones yeah. all <laughs> over the place. But of course, as is standard, they had a hard fucking time selling this film. Yeah. And so when it finally was time to show it, they decided to buy out one screening for it. Mm -hmm. And of course it did fucking gangbusters. Yeah, yeah. Which I still don't know what that means, but I use it all the fucking you time. You do, you do say that a lot. Somebody explain that to me. <laughs> <laughs> was that like a candy that was really good or something? Can we like just start saying Ghostbusters instead? Sure. Hey, hey, there you go. <laughs> so it went over like Ghostbusters. Right. There you go. And Everybody <laughs> loves Ghostbusters. We all do. So it of course does that. Right. They finally find a distribution distributor it sells it fucking makes ridiculous amounts of money uh -huh. and the rest is history so there's your little history lesson <laughs> thanks <laughs> professor yeah of course uh you've all passed for listening to <laughs> me fucking go on and on and on <laughs> now before we destroy this film's brain we would like to issue a warning for spoilers pod mortem is a very in-depth podcast and in thoroughly discussing horror films we have no choice but to spoil a thing or two if you don't wish to be spoiled, please go watch the film, then come back and enjoy the show. If you've already seen the film or don't care about spoilers, let's shuffle to the mall. So the film opens on a shot of a red carpeted wall in a television studio. I, I'm, I don't mean to interject already, <laughs> but I was like, are they inside of a red blood cell? I, I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was honestly thinking, I was like, is this some kind of like, what the fuck? But the thing that's really funny to me is that everybody has theories about this. Uh -huh. They're like, oh, so it's red because Romero's like, you know, blood is going to be a thing. Right. And well, obviously it's going to be a thing. No, <laughs> no, I don't think so. But on Film School Rejects, I read that Tom Savini asked George Romero, he's like, so was the carpet red because you're priming the viewer? And Romero goes, no. <laughs> so, so that's not it. He said, we just filmed at a studio that had a red yeah. wall. <laughs> Sometimes a red wall is just a red wall. Yeah. Got it. But we pull back to reveal a sleeping Francine played by Galen Ross. She moves and twitches seemingly in the grips of a nightmare. And we get the title Dawn of the Dead. Now, you may remember Galen Ross from Creepshow. Yeah. I was surprised. I don't know why I don't remember her being in this, but I think this is the first time she worked with Romero. Well, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> But suddenly she's frightened awake and into the arms of Tony, played by Cliff Forrest, who asks if she's all right. Now, this is the first of many family members sprouting up in this film because Cliff Forrest is the brother of Christine Forrest, who is George A. Romero's wife at the time of Dawn of the Dead. Well, when you said Forrest, I was like, hmm, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> But he tells her that shit is hitting the fan, and we hear a frantic argument coming from a wall of televisions. We then hear what sounds like a heartbeat increasing in intensity as the talking heads shout about the lack of information to explain what's been going on. So for the record, like 99% of this cast goes uncredited, so I did my best trying to find out who the fuck plays who, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of gaps. So if you hear me say a woman or a zombie, yeah. it's, Got it. I, I tried my best. <laughs> um, so a woman sits next to Francine. <laughs> Who is she played by? It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she says that she feels like she's dreaming and Francine tells her that she isn't. As people rush in and out of the room, a second woman brings Francine a cup of coffee, telling her that a ton of the crew has bailed and they don't know how much longer they're going to be on the air. Francine walks into the control room where a TV director played by George A. Romero sits at the switches. Nah. He's attempting to navigate the clusterfuck that's going on and screams to a nearby producer played by Christine Forrest for a list of <laughs> rescue stations. That's hilarious. It's a family affair. I wonder if, like, in my mind, the way that these were made and stuff, it's like, was that planned or were they just like, fuck it, I'll do it. Like, I'll, I'll get in there. <laughs> That's a you know good question. I mean? Yeah. I mean, there there comes a time later that some people on the crew were just randomly like, uh -huh. I'd like to be a zombie. And so they just became Bad. a zombie. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I mean... While this was going on, like the credits are still rolling, and I saw that Michael Gornick was the director of photography. Yeah, like, man. Also, Creep Show. Yeah, and so he like, directed Creep Show too. Oh, well, nice! Isn't that cool? I remember because he made that plant uh, Gornick Realty or something. Oh, and, yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, and I was like, no, nah, I would have done the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but the producer says that all the rescue stations have been knocked off the air, and sarcastically asks if he wants her to just pull one out of her ass. I was like, look, times are tough already. We don't right? really we don't need, need the attitude. <laughs> I did also want to call out the music because I really love a lot of the music in this film. A lot of it's really good. A lot of it, uh, my eyebrow was raised. <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> I think I can explain why. Okay. Most of it because 
Argento became really close with a band called Goblin whenever they scored a few of his films, including Suspiria. Love the score to okay. Suspiria. <laughs> did I mention I love Suspiria? You did. But other music is just stock music that Romero found and used. Okay, I bet I can guess yeah. <laughs> where the stock music is. I guarantee when it starts to get a little whimsical is when uh, <laughs> shit, you know. I think part of their deal was Argento told him he could use however much Goblin he wanted and then just fill in the blanks where he felt he <laughs> could. <laughs> and okay, so, I, yeah. get it. You got it, boss. I get it. But the men arguing on television, Dr. Foster, played by David Crawford, and Mr. Berman, played by David Early, continue their spat. Foster asks if Berman believes the dead are returning to life to attack the living, and Berman says he isn't sure what to believe, because all they have is what people like him are telling them, so it's kind of hard to believe them. Foster insists it's a fact and urges Berman to cut the standard talk show bullshit, because they really are just like fucking going back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. I saw on a featurette called The Dead Will Walk. Uh-huh. It's where I got like 99% of my information. These two actors worked in a ton of plays together. Uh-huh. And so Romero dug the first take of this because of their chemistry and just kind of <laughs> called it a day on that. Well, how- <laughs> it's like, great job, guys. Let's, right. <laughs> let's move and on. And that's One a take. wrap. Yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but behind the scenes, Francine goes to retrieve a list of rescue stations from Charlie, played by Vic Kleeman, who tells her that half of his list is now inoperative and that the news that's been going out has actually been old because it hasn't been updated in 12 hours. We cut to a shot of various employees arguing with each other, some looking deeply concerned and upset. Francine tells them to just kill the rescue station's crawl that's been appearing at the bottom of the screen, and they reluctantly do. So shit is moving really fast. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like we're caught so off guard the minute it starts. because, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'd say 99% of zombie films, and I know that this predates the vast majority of them, but we kind of slowly see this start and get out of control. Mm -hmm. This we're just like dropped in it already being out of control. And it's already kind of confusing because if you, if you don't know Night of the Living Dead, you're like, okay, what is going on? Yeah, what the fuck is happening? You're the dudes on the TV. You're like, okay, so you need to tell me what the fuck (laughs) is happening. I mean, that's what I was thinking too, because I know watching this now, we're all so well-versed in zombie. Like Mm -hmm. everyone is, children are like, we all know zombie rules, but in 1978 like what are how they? well yeah how well is that i mean you know yeah and it's it's getting even more tense because they're like okay not only do we need to tell people about rescue mm-hmm. stations we're losing rescue stations right. yeah so it's like this is horrifying yeah this whole like what's going on here i was like everybody's freaking out they just dropped us into this shit oh yeah, yeah. there is no like you said there's no build up no ramp up yeah, nothing. it's just hey it's already happening. Yeah, and we kind of just um, you feel like Francine waking up. Yeah, really. Yeah, I kind of enjoyed that. Yeah, because instead of me being like, okay, so this is happening now. Oh, that's why that. It's just you're just in it, dude. It's yeah. like here we go. <laughs> it's kind of. I mean, it made me think of the fucking like CDC episode of The Walking Dead where they tried to over explain everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> And yeah, like, no. just leave some shit to yeah, the imagination, just, please. Come on. Remember in that episode when they were like, the bottom line is, even if you're bitten, just get back to work. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be yeah. fine. You, dude, come on. <laughs> it was a tiny bite. <laughs> it like barely broke the skin. And look, uh, just stay home for five days and then come back. And yeah, then go back to back. work. Yeah, chill out. Jesus. Get your ass back to work. The economy. <laughs> <laughs> but on set... Foster is now losing his shit on Berman, saying that this situation has been going on for three weeks and asks what it'll take for them to see. Now, this to me was kind of a little nod to Night of the Living Dead, I thought, because if it's been going on for three weeks, it's the same area of the country. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm like, so are they trying to say that Night of the Living Dead was three weeks ago? It was the beginning. Right. Or like, what's the timeline if there is a kind of connection? Right, right, right. But Foster says that every dead body that is not exterminated becomes one of them. It gets up and kills, and then the people it kills get up and kill. Sounds like a lot. (laughs) (laughs) This is when Givens, a station manager played by Daniel Dietrich, loses his shit about the rescue stations being taken off the crawl. He says they need to be up every single minute they're on the air or else people will tune out. Francine argues that it's sending people to their deaths, but Givens says that they need to be up no matter what. Now, this is hilarious because even though the world is ending, Givens is trying to pop a rating. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) What the fuck? It's too much. He's like, look, they're breathing down my neck. (laughs) Right. The station called. It's like, dude, (laughs) we're here. 
But the pulsing music and synth grow louder as the staff just begin to walk out. Berman screams at the crew as Givens shouts for someone to run the console. Now, Berman says, get that fucking idiot off the air. Yeah. I was like, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> That's going to be a fine, I think. <laughs> Well, in 78, did they have that set up? Oh, yeah. I feel, like, I feel like they were more. I was going to say, probably stricter. Yeah. Now you can show like people. Oh, yeah. I guess you're this, right. This film, didn't it almost get an X? Yeah. I think he was going to get it rated. And when he learned that it was going to get an X, he just released it unrated. Right. Which kind of fucked with him because then they couldn't advertise properly. Right, right. right. But it still made a shit ton of money. So he's like, right. fuck you all the way yeah. to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if, if this were made in 2022, it would not be rated be, be oh, 13 no. right be 13. <laughs> even with the blood like, it's fine yeah, it's, like, okay. it's fine but foster continues these things kill for food they eat their victims and it's what keeps them going he then says if they had listened and dealt with things properly without emotion it wouldn't have come to this hmm huh, yeah. yeah no uh <laughs> when was this film made uh 2020 <laughs> Fucking A, yeah, man. It's, uh, horror has a way. Well, it really does. Because every... It's now and it's later on. I'm like, okay, this is fucking... <laughs> are we talking about zombies or are we talking about fucking the Rona? Like, yeah. what's, what's really going on? It is uncomfortable. I'm going to be honest with you. It, but I feel like this shows like... It's almost worst case scenario mm -hmm. that this is affecting all of us and we choose to still divide and bicker. Like, you would want to watch this movie and be like, that's fucking ridiculous. Why aren't they just ABC? Yeah. But no, this is that's literally what we do. Like, yeah. uh, from experience, <laughs> that's what we do. What's funny to me is that watching this, if we had watched this in 2019, mm -hmm. I would have been like, wow, they were fucked up in the 70s. Yeah, they're yeah. fucking stupid, man. <laughs> but what we lived through, we're like, oh, we've just always been. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great to know. My cynicism has been proven. <laughs> yeah, no shit. But Foster then shares that all major cities in the United States, including Philadelphia, are currently under martial law. People are no longer allowed to occupy private residences. And he reminds the viewers that the only way to truly exterminate the dead bodies is the removal of the head or by destroying the brain. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I first of all, I love that he's being so forward with everything. Right. But at the same time, I can't even imagine the shit that's going on with the people at home watching this. Weird enough stuff outside yeah. your window, but then the people on the news are like, "You gotta take yeah, the head you off, gotta yes. cut his head off." Like, like what oh. the fuck? I mean, I <laughs> just really putting yourself in the situation, and we've already like talked about the parallels to COVID. But like, what if that's what they were fucking saying on the news in 2020? Yeah. <laughs> it's March of 2020, and they're like, "If someone has a fever, take yeah. their fucking head <laughs> off." Like, what do you don't wait that. for them to pop a positive? It's <laughs> a bit extreme. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't it's wait like, for the test results. Cut, yeah. cut his mic. <laughs> I can't imagine looking to the news for guidance and being told to either remove the head or destroy the brain. Like that's asking a that lot. That fucking that sucks. I know yeah, that, that, no, but it, it sucks a lot. But people are out there eating each other. I mean, True. I, I mean, would. Yeah, I'd be like, I that, that motherfucker has rabies or something. <laughs> right. And what do they do with the animals that have rabies? Yeah, oh, they've yeah. got they to check them. So it, I, I mean, I would though. In '78, I'm pretty sure everybody was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> I mean, I guess my parallel with COVID kind of falls away when I remember that they are eating each other. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We haven't gotten to that variant yeah, yet. Not yet. <laughs> not, yet. <laughs> not yet. But more members of the crew leave as Steven, a helicopter pilot played by David Imge, enters the studio. He sidles up to Francine, telling her that they're using the chopper to get the fuck out and to meet him on the roof at 9 p.m. Francine is very reluctant, but Steven tells her somebody's got to survive. There's a guy while they're talking. Uh, I don't know. He's part of the crew and he's got big eyes and he's like yeah. trying to look like he's not listening, but he's fucking listening. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've never related. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's like, Ooh. it was the camera guy. right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, Steven is clearly pouring tea. Yeah. yeah. And I would like a sip. <laughs> he was just like, oh, sure. But like trying to be cool about it. I like, what time laugh. we leave and yeah. I, like, the I, I heard there's a chopper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Steven tells her to meet him up there and says, don't make me come looking for you, which I thought was sweet is very much explained later why he's saying this. Yeah. But not knowing these characters, he could have very easily have just been like, we will leave you behind. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to, you know, wait on you. Right. Yeah. But that cameraman played by Jim Edmondson, <laughs> who totally was eavesdropping. Yeah, I love you, Jim Edmondson. <laughs> he tells her that she might as well go. 
The station will probably be taken off the air at midnight. And he says, very cryptically, our responsibility is finished. <laughs> yeah, he does. I was like, I was like good lord. Is, like, oh. dude, how much like how much longer do you expect us to stay here doing this shit when people are literally On dying the hair, in the street? Yeah, that is yeah true. I'm done. I'm yeah. not holding this camera anymore. It's like these camera angles don't even matter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can just get a static shot. I have a family. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure they'd still want us at work though. One oh god, yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. It's yes. like, dude, there's a zombie outbreak. Can you be here by eight <laughs> thirty? It's like, dude. It's okay, but we're away yeah so. yeah <laughs> it's super busy well but i mean you guys know that when it rains it gets busy for you guys at work oh yeah no yeah. zombie apocalypse uh, it would fucking be slammed yeah. man it's, it's, it's a line out the door there could be a tornado outside <laughs> blizzards people will still go out to go to eat last year during the winter storm yeah oh my god i'm like you're Look, risking your life i would just yeah, learn, a pancake. To eat. I would yeah. learn how to make pancakes <laughs> like, I don't learn. I mean, there's a box you just gotta add water yeah, that's true Literally, that's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty damn easy and most of the time you already have the ingredients at home yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't understand <laughs> But Francine mulls this over. I did think that it was good for her character because him telling her that kind of allows her to go guilt free. Right. Yeah. To where it's not like she's just abandoning everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It still makes her look very good. But we then cut to the outside of an apartment complex as a SWAT team descends upon the building. The commander, played by Fred Baker, uses a megaphone to call out to a guy called Martinez, telling him that the people in this project are his responsibility and that they don't want anyone hurt. He and his people are facing no charges, but they need to come out now. On the rooftop, Roger, played by Scott H. Reiniger, sits ready and waiting with the rest of the SWAT team having a smoke. Now, I thought this was very interesting because, again, with just pulling people you can find. Right. Whenever they did the casting for this film in New York City, mm-hmm. Reiniger and the guy that plays Steven right. work together at the same restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and so they already knew each yeah. other and then they both went to the casting call they both ended up getting cast that's really cool that's really cool but <sighs> Wooly, played by james a Bafico, goes on a super racist rant a little too eager for martinez to pop out no shit yeah. james a Bef- fuck you <laughs> hey, that's the actor's uh, name yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> he was horrible yeah, yeah. I, like i was like please let him die first like that was my only hope for the whole film i had my fingers crossed as i was typing the script yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but roger tells a young officer played by rod stouffer to just play it cool once they get inside this is when martinez played by john amplis and several other residents burst through one of the doors guns blazing now not only was John Amplis the casting director for this film, but he also played the ghoulish version of Nathan Grantham in Creepshow. Oh, uh, shit. He's just, I this love- This is a family affair. Yeah, I just love to see it. But the young officer, unfortunately, catches a bullet right to the dome, falling into Roger's arms. I was sad that it wasn't the racist dude first. Wooly? <laughs> yes. I was, first of all, it just was very sad to me because it, it seemed like- you know how in movies where it's like if, if it's your last day on the job or your first day on oh, the job, yeah. no, you're, you're going to die. die. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing is, according to Film School Rejects, this is the first headshot that Tom Savini ever orchestrated. Wow. Really? Yeah. All right. Fucking history. Right? But this is when the SWAT team opens fire and it's an absolute bloodbath with casualties on both sides. Roger advances on a retreating Martinez, holding him at gunpoint. This is when Martinez makes a break for it as Roger pleads with him to not get in the line of fire. Should have listened because he is promptly shot and falls off the roof. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Uh, Before we move forward any further, (laughs) I'm sure we all know what I'm about to say. Yes, we're, yes. Uh, Was that brown face? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, I was a little confused at why the guy was like that. It was bad. (laughs) Yeah, I know. It was bad. It was pretty bad. It was, well... The thing was for me is I couldn't tell if it was just like his face was shiny. And then the, the closer I looked, I was like, I no, think that no. is paint. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. is fucking paint. Yeah. I, I did too. And yeah. then when it shows him closer, I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. I was like, really? I was very surprised. No, it was bad. I, yeah. It was I even bad. went and looked in the mirror myself. I was like, oh, man. Like, that's that's not not right. I don't know uh, John Amplis's ancestry, yeah. but I, I, regardless of it, you shouldn't be painting yeah, people. No, no. That's step Even one. Unless you're painting to... them gray. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Which we see later. Yes. If he was trying to go for the dirty look, you probably didn't need to do that. I don't you know, know what I mean? Was, uh, Maybe just some like oil or something like uh 
like, like some exhaust or something like uh-huh. oh look i'm Blistery. dirty from the street but yeah no he had like brown paint on his it face. was bad and it yeah. was egregious the was other egregious. the other thing that gets me is that i have met about a thousand people with the last name martinez mm-hmm. right literally every shade that you oh, can even absolutely. yeah, yeah. It's so, unnecessary. so why are we painting folks yeah, but, I, I well know. because i don't think that it's not without comment the people that are living in this building I, I i didn't see any white people they were all no. people of color and that goes to Viet, a, right. hispanic latinx yeah, yeah. black what have you it kind of goes to Wooly's fucking racism exactly right. so Earlier. i mean maybe they were like no he can't be white i mean i i don't know i i don't I mean know. there's light-skinned I, hispanic I, you know people, i'm yeah. really trying to <laughs> explain the unexplainable here but, uh, and I, gonna, i'm gonna stop i did it did i was kind of taken aback at Wooly's honesty because he was super racist yeah. and then he's like they're living better than me i'm like well, that's, <laughs> <laughs> so you're just jealous yeah I'm like, where is this coming just from <laughs> unbelievable but again, hope he dies soon. <laughs> but after that moment, that did not age very well. <laughs> the team throws smoke grenades into the building and then masks up for the raid. Some officers forcibly remove residents with some level of decorum, while men like Wooly take extreme pleasure in the violence. He literally kicks one of the apartment doors open and without any warning, just blows an occupant's head off. Yeah. I, I was I was watching that. I literally said, "Oh shit!" No, it yeah. was it was very <laughs> shocking. It's unbelievable. I, I read it. I read something about this exploding head that I don't know if it's one hundred percent true, mm-hmm. but I can't talk it about it. It was real. <laughs> yeah, they literally they shot really killed a guy. Uh, I I can't talk about it until the end of the film, so I'm gonna make a note to okay. revisit it. Okay, I do have some stuff that is talkable. Is that All a word? Right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. All right. <laughs> talkable. According to that featurette, Tom Savini said that they used a plaster head Mm -hmm. and they filled it with blood-filled condoms (laughs) (laughs) and apple cores. Oh, nice. And so you get a little blood and meat. Yeah, yeah. I just, how do you, how does your brain go apple core? Like, I don't know. How much did they do? Oh, I know. How much, you know what I mean? Like, I would think meat probably yeah like, like put a steak oh, in there yeah. you know i mean that's disgusting well, you didn't <laughs> cut up or crush up the apple cores yeah no i mean obviously it worked yeah. it looked great i just yeah how do you that's, think that's about like it a at genius the time yeah. mind i would yeah. never think it's like what is looks like brains apple yeah, no no no, no not yeah. the whole apple though. <laughs> yeah not, just the yeah. core <laughs> just the core like, what are you an amateur yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whole apple fuck. yeah never blow a man's head off yeah. before <laughs> But he did use a real shotgun. That was real. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right, nice. And I, they said that people gathered around to watch because they were so intrigued by wow. it. I bet. His whole thing, which is really like commendable to me, uh, and also like I'm amazed at the things he's seen, because mm-hmm. he was a war photographer yeah. right. in Vietnam. And so he said, if I can't make my shit look as awful as the shit I actually saw, yeah. he goes, then it doesn't work. Wow. wow. I'm like, Tom, you bad motherfucker. Well, I mean... <laughs> having seen it firsthand i mean yeah. that's fucking wow yeah <laughs> but Wooly continues his rampage roger finally taking notice and trying to restrain him dude i i laughed a little bit because he has no remorse he kicks one of the doors open and he goes hey 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like what the fuck it's a little unbelievable it's too much <laughs> but a large masked officer gets in front of everyone telling Wooly to step away Roger jumps on Wooly's back, begging for help, but Wooly just throws him off. He's like twice his size. Yeah. The large officer once again tells him to step away. Wooly then kicks the door open as a random officer screams for him not to go in that room. Wooly begins to walk in, but the large officer fires a shot right through Wooly's heart, killing him instantly. Thank you. Woo! Good. Dude was a piece of shit. Good. He died. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the killing is right up my alley so far. Right. Everything. I was like, this is great. I was like, you're dying. You're dying. You just died because you deserved it. Uh-huh. I was like, this is fantastic. I was like, I, I can't get enough. I mean, you start off being shocked by the rookie oh, getting no, shot. Yeah. And yeah. then you got an exploding. That I was, mean, it just yeah. it, it escalates so quickly. That was cool because he's like, have a cigarette. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> my thing is the balls to start off with this level of violence. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. Like, that's incredible. Yeah. And for being 1978, yeah. shit looks good. It oh, does. no, yeah. A lot of people talk shit about the blood in this movie. Tom Savini yeah. hates the blood yeah. in this movie. I, it, it, it's a little bright. but he said, he said it looks like melted crayons. 
But oh, you shouldn't have said that because now that's no, all it I does. See. It does. <laughs> but when Mero <laughs> yeah, said that <laughs> he wanted this to look almost comic booky, and oh, okay. that works, and it does. It does. It does. And to me, a lot of the Giallo films that I've seen. The blood is a very bright red. Yeah. Okay. And so for me, I was like, oh, hell yeah. Right. <laughs> Dario. <Wow>. Yeah. <laughs> but you said that in Giallo's, they use color as like oh, statements yeah. or like, so I can understand so, yeah. that. Yeah. So I enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but after killing Wooly, the large officer calms the crowd before leaving. Well, I say calms the crowd, but he kind of points his gun yeah. at them. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't, they were calm. Yeah. He got quiet. Yeah. <laughs> But Roger collects himself as he and a couple officers head into the apartment. They find one corpse on the ground, blood pooled around what's left of his head. A skinny officer who has collected Wooly's weapons stumbles upon a reanimated corpse missing a leg and an arm. He may be armless, but he is not harmless. And he crawls <laughs> <laughs> towards Skinny. A third officer tells him to shoot it in the head, but Skinny realizes that the trigger-happy Wooly left no shells in the shotgun, and so he just stumbles and falls to the ground. Is that what it was? I was like, why is he scared? He's got like 20 guns. What is he doing? <laughs> I don't know. Well, his whole reaction to the entire thing is very odd. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't understand what Skinny's about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Skinny with Skinny? <laughs> yeah. But the third officer is then lunged at by a woman zombie who just so happened to be occupying the apartment as well. Roger and the third officer struggle with her as a mustached zombie just stumbles out of one of the rooms and into the outside hallway. Roger and the third officer throw the woman to the couch, firing on her several times just as Skinny finally makes short work of that crawler. Of course, all headshots, so everything's pizza. Right. Yeah. They're not coming back. But the mustache zombie makes his way downstairs and we see his wife break away from the SWAT team, embracing him. Realizing immediately that something isn't quite right, she tries to pull away, but the zombie takes a very convincing bite out of her neck. Miguel was hungry. Yes. His <laughs> Apple, <laughs> yeah. Dude, that bite looked fucking yeah. fantastic. I did laugh because his name was Miguel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go subscribe to my horror confessional. Yes. yes. <laughs> Shout out to Miguel. Yes. But he also bites her in the arm. Yeah. Both bites for me are very hard to watch. Yes. Because they look fucking no, real. They look, well, they look good because it happens in real time. Yeah. yeah. It's not like a cut away to the teeth. You're right. And mm -hmm. then back to the full them. Then the teeth tearing. It's like, no, I'm going to chomp. Bam, and you're going to watch. Yeah. yeah. You're there the whole time. Yeah. And you both hate and love being there. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. But she screams and officers pull them apart as a team on the lower floor sprays the zombie with bullets. Back inside the apartment, Skinny, who is still on the floor, is incredibly traumatized and he places his gun to his cheek and pulls the trigger. Roger watches on, almost in disbelief, and stumbles into an adjacent laundry room. His cheek? Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was odd, and we don't see the shot or anything. Yeah. No. So it was just an odd... Yeah, it w I thought that was strange. I also, uh, I don't know if I was trying to write a joke and never came back to it, but I wrote Z-O-C, L-O-L. Zombies, right. zombies of color. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you tried your best. <laughs> thank you, thank well, you. Uh, what's that Coldplay song, When You Try Your Best? <laughs> 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 but you don't <laughs> Uh, yeah, and yes, I'm sorry for referencing Coldplay. <laughs> <laughs> but the large unnamed officer who killed Wooly steps out from behind a sheet and the men draw their guns on each other. The officer recognizes Roger from Wooly's unit and Roger wisely dummies up saying that he didn't see anything, especially how Wooly died. Well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so finally trusting him, the men lower their guns and the officer takes his mask off, revealing him to be Peter played by Ken Foree. Badass. Yeah. yeah. I love this dude. And again, it's funny growing up at certain times because we saw The Devil's Rejects before we saw Dawn of the Dead original. And so we're like, hey. You're right. It's yeah. It's fucking, what was it, Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But they sit in an eerie silence away from the chaos outside the door. Roger shares a cigarette with Peter and tells him that a lot of people are running and he could too. Tonight. A friend of his has a helicopter and asked him to come with. But before he can elaborate, a door opens and an old priest coughs through billowing smoke, begging them to let him pass. I was like, 
you know what's happening out here. Mm-hmm. You cannot be coming into rooms, coughing, looking all tired. <laughs> like you're gonna get fucking blown away, dude. Yeah, but that's their apartment building. I know, but you don't hear all the shooting and screaming and zombies and eating. <laughs> Nate, can I well, ask yeah, how I'm, he was supposed to enter? I'm a priest. <laughs> I am I'm not, not a dead. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, he's supposed to be singing Pearl Jam's "Alive." Oh, really? Oh. And <laughs> is that the, the code? That's what the news said. And if yeah, right. <laughs> Sing a song that doesn't come out for 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we know you're alive. <laughs> but the priest refuses to be taken to the medics and just asks if they'll let him go up to the seventh floor to find his sister. He says many people have died in the past few weeks and they're actually in the basement of this building. He gave them their last rites and he tells Roger and Peter to do what they will with them. He says the police may be stronger than the residents, but soon the dead will be stronger than them. I was like, oh, fuck. He's yeah. trying to warn you, dude. He is. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a lot of wisdom. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he goes on to say, as he's leaving, that when the dead walk, we must stop killing or we'll lose the war. That's like a genius fucking... Because think about it. Yes. For two seconds. Just think about it. It's simple math, ladies yes. and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But down below, the SWAT team finds a boarded up door in the basement. Foolishly, they knock off a couple of the boards only for the zombies that the priest spoke of to spill out ready for dinner. (laughs) He literally just warned them. He did. (laughs) did not listen. Yeah, we just put some people down here. And why didn't they radio in? They're like, "Uh, don't go in the basement. (laughs) We just met a priest. Yeah. Nothing. But the music swells as the living and the dead co-mingle and we cut before the impending carnage. Now, it is fucking stacked in this basement. There's no room to move. Right. I, I'm sitting here and or I was sitting there and I was watching the movie and I was trying to get in the mindset of 78. Okay. So zombies are known, but not like very big known. You know what I mean? Would that mm-hmm. be fair to say in 78? Like, you know what a zombie is, but maybe you don't understand all the rules or we don't know really... What's going on? Or have, have zombies, the rules been fully established? Right. Are, are you saying as like an audience member or a member of the SWAT team? Like, a, well, like an audience member. Like, do you do we know fully already what's going on with zombies? Or are we just been introduced with them before, right? With uh-huh. Night of the Living Dead? Well, I mean, yeah, I would say because that was 10 years before this. So, I mean, it's in the consciousness. Right. But it's not like there's a dozen zombie movies yet. It's not like no. now. Okay. Uh Having to go through this, I know it's a movie, but like being the SWAT team and having to do that, or even just sitting in the theater and like, what the fuck's <laughs> happening? That's nuts, dude. Oh, yeah. Seeing this shit on the camera or like on fucking the in the theater mm-hmm. or being a SWAT team and having to kill a for real zombie. <laughs> what? No, it's a lot. Yeah. And I, it's the number of them yeah. and the fact, I mean, I don't know. They all. I saw that uh, Romero had said, because they were like, how did you direct all the extras? Yeah. And uh-huh. he's like, you can't, because if you say, I like this move, they're all going to be doing that move yeah. and it's not going to look <laughs> convincing. Right. So he said he was like, be dead. That's how he directed the extras. Wow. And so just... The, what, what's your interpretation <laughs> yeah. of death? Yeah, just, just do it. The number of them and them all moving differently. Some of them moved really fucking funny. Oh, yeah. uh, just, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure we'll talk more about that later. Mm-hmm. Um, it's terrifying. Yeah. Because it's not some like almost like like stragglers situation like in Night of Living Dead. Like they're in this bitch. Right, like, right. We're toe to toe. It's just... This whole scene, I was like, if this is the whole movie, my, I'm, my nerves are fucking <laughs> shot. And that's one thing that I do want to talk about is the way that they use the camera in this right. film. Because they put, it's almost like guerrilla filmmaking. That's yeah. the thing. It, it just, it feels real. You're in it. Yeah. You know? And so that, especially in this scene, when you're in the basement, I don't, it's almost like what we talked about on As Above, So Below. Mm-hmm. I don't like tight spaces. Not yeah. at all. Especially if it's filled with fucking people. Yeah. Uh, especially, especially zombies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just ratcheting it up to be. I, but I like was, it even that's less. That's what I'm saying. Like, I was like, God damn, this yeah. is nuts. Yeah. Like, you're right there. Yeah. Too much. But in another part of the basement, Peter and Roger stumble upon dozens of fenced in zombies who sit and lie together, many of them enjoying a feast of severed limbs and various body parts. This was very disturbing to me. Yeah. Yeah. The way that they were moving. I don't know. Something about it like really bothered me. I saw the actor who played Roger. Uh Uh-huh. 
had said that when he saw this, he got sick to his stomach. I uh, I, don't, like, I don't I honestly don't blame him. Like yeah. there's something I think one of them is like wrapped up in like a, I don't want to say a pillowcase, but that's what I thought. Like a <laughs> yeah, blanket. Yeah. It's wrapped there. He's wrapped up in something, but like he's still like moving back and forth, mm-hmm. but he has no limbs. Right. I'm just like that existence. Like you're dead, but you're not. I don't know. Something about it just really <laughs> fucked with me. Like this was probably the most, and it gets really gory later on, and mm-hmm. you know, shit gets crazy. But this right here was the most disturbing part to me. Seeing them locked up in that cage, and some of them eating, and some of them just like there, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, it. Ugh, I don't know. I think that that's kind of one thing that shocked me about this is because it does have this feeling of like older filmmaking Mm -hmm. right but then at the same time like there is something about this that is just universally scary forever yeah yeah. and seeing them in there and again i saw in that interview with ken foree he was like after going into this room he's like i don't know that this is going to be released in this country (laughs) like (laughs) he was worried i'm watching in 2022 and i'm like that's fucked up. Like, yeah. That that shouldn't be. Happening. Yeah. <laughs> but Peter walks in, firing on them one by one until he runs out of bullets and has to reload, which is when Roger finally joins him in dispatching the dead. A man who appears to be wearing an army uniform stumbles upon them and is like, "Jesus Christ!" Yeah. I mean, you're not prepared. They didn't. No, yeah. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> this isn't in basic training or anything. <laughs> But he asks if they need more men, but Peter says it's all been done. The army man bails rapidly after another, Jesus Christ. Roger asks why the dead are kept here, and Peter says it's because they still believe there's respect in dying before firing on another one of them. In a neat little transition, Stephen pulls the dead body of a guard back off of a desk, and it, like syncs up perfectly with that gunshot yeah i thought that was the one he killed oh peter i was like whoa shit it's like wait no we're here now it was very interesting we're somewhere else <laughs> but he moves the guard to gain access to a radio very somberly he tells the man on the other end that the operator is dead and that the post is abandoned outside francine calls for steven as a police siren approaches their location Stephen says that he hopes it's Roger, and as the police car parks, we see that it is, in fact, Roger and Peter who step out. Roger checks in on Stephen and Francine and vouches for Peter when Stephen's like, who's he? Well, I mean, we're trying to flee. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be bringing... This is not a plus one situation. (laughs) There's room on the chopper. I mean, have the courtesy to send a text. (laughs) (laughs) Send me the Pearl Jam song. (laughs) My thing about this is, like, why... You know fucking roger right why would i bring him otherwise like oh no he's a wild card <laughs> yeah i don't know this dude just yeah. we're gonna have to watch our backs <laughs> <laughs> of course he's cool like, yeah. what are you talking about <laughs> but after roger shouts to another group of men moving boxes around we cut to francine and peter getting in the chopper with steven francine is worried about the extra weight but steven says it'll be okay even if it's a little harder on the fuel so we're setting up the fuel uh-huh. right As Roger joins them, an officer pops up asking if they have any smokes, which Roger says they don't. I'm like, you've been smoking all film, dude. He he (laughs) has. And uh, that dude had like Tyrone Bigham's energy when when it came to the (laughs) cigarettes. You guys got so like his eyes were all. Give him a fucking cigarette, man. Just toss it out as you're flying. As you're flying, away. Away. you never have that guy. <laughs> you never have to worry about him again. He, if there was ever a time for a goddamn Mm-mm. cigarette, I think it's I, right I, now. Except for when you have to kill more zombies and need a cigarette. But you or when just you're gave running it from the zombies guy. and you're like, I shouldn't, I yeah, shouldn't be so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the cigarette in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Just huffing and puffing. Look, I've never smoked in my life except in that story I told a long time ago where I did not inhale. <laughs> 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 but I think I would start smoking at this point. Why, why the fuck, the fuck not? not? Yeah. Why Let's the fuck just start not? doing everything. <laughs> sure. But this is when they learn that that officer plans to head out on the river to an island. And when they ask what island, he says any island. Yeah. Which I'm like, all right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. But I did think it was interesting because I feel like little bits and pieces are taken from this film and used and expanded upon in the remake because right. that's a big plot point in the oh, remake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. That's a really good point. I forgot about that. Yeah. Because yeah. they never bring up an island again in this yeah. film. <laughs> <laughs> 
But the group tells the officer that their plan is to just head straight up. And they do just that. And we see Francine smoking a cigarette, you fucking jerk. Yeah. I hope that guy did not see that. Poor Tyrone. (laughs) Be all right, man. (laughs) Uh, Sometimes, I don't know if it's just me, Hmm. but dude kind of looks like... uh, uh, Captain America sometimes. And Are we like, talking about uh, Roger? Or? Uh, no, man. I'm talking about Falcon. Uh, Anthony. Oh, um, uh, Ma- Mackie. Uh, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes is the way he like looks, like he smirks. I'm like, yeah, you look like Captain America. <laughs> See, I have not seen <laughs> the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't. Nobody looks like Chris Evans uh, to me. No. <laughs> uh, no, definitely not. It's the eyes. That's what it yeah, is. It's yeah, it's the eyes. Yeah. Okay, I need to catch up, guys. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but Roger absolutely crashes out, leaving Peter and Francine to chat while Stephen flies the chopper. He asks if Roger is all right, and Francine says that he is most of the time. Peter says that he just likes to know who everybody is, and Francine agrees. I'm like, man, after Roger vouched for you, you're like, what's this guy's story? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the character dynamics in this film. Mm-hmm. I will say that I would love to know more about all of them. That's... Yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of this film that you'd be like, man, I wish... That's the one thing I wish is that there was more characterization. That that was kind of my beef, too. Mm-hmm. was like, I, I would have liked to know a little more. Anything. A crumb more. Yeah. For how long the film is, too. Yeah. 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 You can have some more... There was one scene I did read in the script and I was like, well, I'm glad that was cut. Yeah. But they they are talking right now in this scene. Right. Francine and Peter. Uh huh. And she asks Peter, you know, you know, what his thing is in the city, all that stuff. Right, right. He starts talking about it and he says that he has two brothers and all this. And she says, and I swear to God, in the oh, script. Oh God. Uh, real brothers or street brothers? Oh yeah. my god! And I'm like, yeah, I'm glad you didn't yeah, put that in. <laughs> well, fuck Francine. Yeah, yeah. no shit. Well, fuck script Francine. <laughs> <laughs> but in the morning light, we see Roger wake up. But then we see that Stephen has just flat out fallen asleep. He literally JFK is like back into the left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But Peter shakes him awake and gives him some water. He drinks it very sloppily. And then he says that he knows where they are, saying that they passed Harrisburg about an hour ago. Did he drink it? I thought he just splashed it in his face. No, yeah. He like put it in his mouth, but then it was everywhere. He threw it (laughs) straight faculty style. (laughs) Right in the face. Because I'm like, the note that I have is, hey, hey, that water's for drinking, not for facing. Because we don't know where we're going to land. No, we don't know how much water there is. So he's the alien. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) we figured it out but they look down on the ground below and see several military and emergency vehicles as well as militiamen and some staggering zombies steven realizes that it's everywhere now and says that the rednecks are probably enjoying it and they clearly are yeah yeah so is this night of living dead that's what i took from it right because there even is like a shot of a house that kind of is similar yeah. i'm like are you are you tying it in is tying it in right, or right. like are you like no that that's where, that's where <laughs> it happened. i don't know <laughs> but we then get shots of the people on the ground the police the military and as steven said the rednecks a man is getting bandaged up in an ambulance but people are also just hanging out and cracking open a cold one like it's the fourth of july or some shit i mean I wish I could say that this is unrealistic, yeah. but it's fucking not, yeah. man. We live in the South. This is this is what it would be. For me, oddly, I felt like this was one of the more disturbing sections. It is. It is. Because, I mean, I feel like for the same reason that the whole cage thing, I don't know what the fuck they had those people in, but that's why it's disturbing because it's so degrading to human life. Mm-hmm. It's like, if this is what you're reduced to, shit, I mean... It wouldn't it be more humane to just take them out. Yeah. And so them like, yeehaw, and fucking drinking beer and shit. <laughs> that was a human. Like uh-huh. not long ago, these were humans like yeah. you. <laughs> so I mean it it really just steps over a line where I mean, yeah, they're still animated, but mm-hmm. like you know what I mean? It's just it really makes us look at ourselves, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I don't like it. <laughs> no, it's it's bad. And it says a lot about society. Right. Yeah. right. I, I couldn't I was bad enough when they're just drinking and laughing and stuff. Right. But when I saw them snapping pictures, I mean they're like, Yeah, zombie apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna all wanna remember but this that's forever. What it would be, there would be fucking t shirts, dude. Mm-hmm. Like you oh, know yeah. that I mean it it just would. It would be the the zombie fights like in the fucking walking right. dead. All of this shit would happen. Like mm-hmm. it just would. 
any way to make a make a bug yeah. off of it. You know? <laughs> hey, the fucking well, TV station guy is like, no, keep that <laughs> on the yeah. air. <laughs> At one point, they're <laughs> they're getting drinks. Uh-huh. Someone spills the whole bag of sugar. Like what? they knock out, they're like getting coffee. There's shots of them. Everybody's grabbing coffee cups. Mm-hmm. Someone like slaps over it. I don't know why it was the funniest fucking thing to me because it's a giant bag of sugar, but someone slaps it, it over. Yeah. And then you see them reach to pick it up and stand back. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, why did you leave that in there? That's all the sugar like, we had in the budget. Why, uh, yeah. That's really what happened. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's too real, actually. <laughs> But as a few zombies arrive, we see them pause the party, putting their beers down to kill them. One group of rednecks shoots a parked car in a field until it explodes into a ball of fire. Chopper flies over the burning car as more men below are using the zombies almost like cans, yeah, like target practice. Yeah, no, they're having a grand old time. Yeah. But they're zombies, though. I mean... I get that. Yeah. But it's been three weeks. But they're zombies. <laughs> this I mean, is what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> What, with society? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm pointing at JP uh, when I say society. But we, society. Sometimes we all have that neighbor. You know what I mean? It's, you know. Three weeks in, I'm like, that's still. Three weeks. Right, you know? right. No, Three I get weeks. it. I, I get it. Do you? But this is, this is, you know, it's not stopping. The only way we to don't. stop them. Half the neighborhood is zombies. The only way Just to stop them. Just wear a them mask. Is, <laughs> <laughs> all right. That'll stop the bites. Yeah. <laughs> We'll put a mask on there. Yeah, there, <laughs> so, oh, there yes. you go. Yeah, problem solved. But in the next shot, we see Steven land the chopper at a fueling station, but they find that the pumps are almost tapped out. While Roger fuels up the chopper, Steven and Francine go to check the hangers for supplies. Unfortunately for them, the sound of the still running chopper has attracted the attention of at least one zombie. Peter goes off to check one of the buildings as well, but finds nothing but an out of order coffee machine. He hits it, and with Fonzie like powers, <laughs> a cup fucking drops and just starts filling yeah. with coffee. He smiles and it kind of feels like a sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> but as he sits down to enjoy it, he hears zombie-like noises coming from behind a closed door. Rather than investigate, he just fires his gun at the door, which gets the attention of Stephen and Francine at that nearby hangar. As they rush out to see what's going on, Stephen runs afoul of a suited zombie. He drops a hammer that he was holding and tussles with that dapper zombie as another zombie approaches from a hilltop and he tells Francine to run. They struggle for far too long on the ground. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> really man. Dead. And Francine's just like, huh? Yeah. yeah. That's, I think that's I, the thing. <laughs> like he's, he's literally reaching for the hammer and Francine just fucking stands there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's, the, yeah, no, she's just watching. Well, she's looking back and forth like, which yeah. zombie? Which one's going to kill her first? It's like, what? Um, yeah, whose team am I on? Yeah. I did, I did want to talk about this because we all know how I felt about Barbara. Yes. Okay? Yeah. This is definitely, I appreciate that Francine does seem to have a brain. Mm-hmm. I read that Galen Ross refused to be a damsel in distress. Right. I don't think she screams at all in this film because uh-huh. she's like, no, I'm not doing right, that. Right. Um, I mean, we see later on, she does do her share. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I just really would have appreciated in this moment for her to kind of step up, at least kick him the hammer. Yeah. You know? <laughs> or pick it up yourself. Uh, I really would have appreciated seeing that from her because at this yeah. point, I'm like, we got another fucking barber yeah. on our hands. Some encouragement. You can do it. You yeah. almost got it. <laughs> like it's right there. there. <laughs> it's right reach there. Reach a little further. <laughs> right, look, I'll push it with my toe. <laughs> <laughs> See, and for me, I think that was the thing is that while well, I said the thing about characters. Right, right. She does have a character arc. Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate yeah. that. But right now, I was literally thinking the same thing. I was like, God yeah. damn it. I was like, George, if you fucking <laughs> yeah. screw me on this again. <laughs> But Steven is finally able to reach the hammer and he clubs the zombie in the head. He then gets up and literally pushes Francine, telling her to run before putting all his weight behind a slug that drops both <laughs> <laughs> the hilltop zombie and Steven. Yeah. <laughs> but the two of them reach the chopper, trying to alert Roger over the noise that another zombie is coming out of the woodwork. The zombie, who noticeably has an absolute five head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we soon learn why. But he climbs over a few boxes to get to Roger, only to have the top of his skull cut off by the rotating blades. Blood oozes down his brain as he dies. 
That looked really cool. Yeah. It did. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's, okay. <laughs> that's why his head that's was so fucking yeah. big. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that featurette, like I said. Yeah. And Tom Savini said that the blades actually weren't running on the chopper. Okay. They were added in in post, so it looked like they were running. Uh, all right. And what they did was they built this apparatus with like some fishing wire, uh-huh. and they just had a dude hold it and run away that ripped off the top of the dude's head. <laughs> <laughs> and there's dudes behind him like holding things of blood, and yeah. they're just squeezing Man, it. I love it. I like, fucking love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and I, I saw on that as well that Tom Savini, the way he got involved right. is George Romero, after he wrote the script in Rome, uh-huh. he calls him up and he's like hey we're doing another dead movie think of really interesting ways to kill people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like you got, you got it, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this for me i feel like it's just such an iconic moment for sure i love it yeah even in 2022 yeah oh no yeah. It, it was it was really good <laughs> yeah but in the impromptu coffee shop that peter's hanging out in to peter's horror Two zombified children burst out from behind the door that he fired into, and after they charge him, he throws them onto a nearby couch and blows them away. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I read that these were Tom Savini's niece and nephew, <laughs> which I thought was adorable. And they're the only <laughs> they're the only zombies that like death has not slowed them down at yeah, all. No. <laughs> <laughs> they're even quicker now. Yeah. I don't understand. That's so it's a family affair, dude. Yeah, yeah. I read that. Uh, Ken Forey didn't know that there were going to be children at all. Uh-huh. And so when he comes in and he's like, oh, that was real. Yeah. Cause uh, he was like, what the uh, fuck? On that feature at, they asked him, he goes, yeah, I didn't like that part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, hmm. zombies, right? Uh, they're attacking you. I mean, you, I get it, but you don't need to be happy about it. Like you're well, smiling. Not ta- <laughs> <laughs> I think you got to build up that tolerance. I'm not saying fuck them kids, but, but, but yeah. Fuck but, them kids. <laughs> <laughs> but outside, Steven tries to keep a zombie at bay, shooting him exclusively in the chest until Roger steps up and shows him how it's done, putting one in its computer. Well, that, <laughs> that's what I'm like, how... Haven't they all literally been told the brain, the brain, the head, the brain? It was on the news this morning. I mean, I know for a fact it was on the news this morning. And that's one thing that does come up a lot, even after all they've seen and all they've done. Right. A lot of times they still insist on shooting zombies in the chest. Yeah. Like, you're just wasting bullets, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're already dead. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That part's taken care of. But Peter turns to leave and finds a zombie in flannel blocking the doorway. Steven, the absolute idiot, fires at it, almost hitting Peter, who dives to safety. Once again, Roger is like, fucking dude, stop. (laughs) (laughs) And he aims confidently, putting an end to that grunge zombie. He's the one that liked Pearl Jam. Yes. (laughs) He was ahead of his time. (laughs) Rest in peace. (laughs) This was so funny. This little interaction where he kept showing dude out. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is happening here? He literally puts his gun down. Yeah. He's like, don't. Just stop. Uh, yeah. I did laugh because it's, first of all, it's funny that they're playing it so playfully. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like it's also setting up Steven's character arc. Right, right. Yeah. And kind of how he fits in with the group. Mm-hmm. But the group finally reconvenes at the chopper, Steven checking in on a sobbing Francine. When she was just sitting there crying, I was like, George, no. Yeah, don't fucking do this to me, dude. <laughs> But Peter is fucking pissed, telling Stephen to never aim your gun at a person. He lifts his rifle, aiming it right at Stephen, and asks, scary, isn't it? I mean, that's a yeah. lesson you need to learn. Yeah. And if you need to learn it with, you know, a loaf in your pants because yeah. you got a gun in your face, <laughs> then you need to learn it. You can't fucking be doing that. No, and I mean, while it was played for laughs, it's really fucking oh, bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. But to Francine's protests, Peter finally lowers his gun, asking Stephen again, scary, isn't it? Stephen looks ashamed and also like he did shit himself. Yeah. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> no, I would have thrown yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> we know you. <laughs> but later that night, inside the chopper, the group debates where they should go next. Stephen says that they need to get fuel, but Roger says that they need to stay out of the big cities. He says no matter where they go, if there aren't too many of those things, they can handle it. Peter says it wasn't one of those things that nearly blew him away. And Steven turns around like, now you listen, Buster. (laughs) Well, I mean, I was like, oh, he's petty. I like him. No, he became my favorite. Yeah, he's like, no, you you remember though? Remember that shit back there? (laughs) See, he's already on our side because he killed that racist. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's fucking snarky. I mean, he can do no wrong. (laughs) No. He can do no wrong. 
But Roger calms things down, saying that there has to be a private airport upstate somewhere, and Stephen says that there are plenty. Roger says that they're probably manned, but Stephen says that they're just after looters and scavengers. Peter's like, wake up, sucker. That's exactly what we are. I mean... Yeah. He's 100% right. Isn't yeah. he like the fucking helicopter that we're in? Like, come yeah. on, dude. <laughs> this was not purchased. Yeah. <laughs> I think, and again, with the social commentary, Stephen's like, when we steal supplies... It's fine. It's sur- yeah. it's, we're survivors. Yeah. yeah. But when they steal supplies, looters and rioters. The whole thing. Yep. But this is when it's Francine's turn to chill things out, saying that they don't even know where they're going and they don't even have a radio. She tells Stephen that he needs to get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> It made me laugh because Stephen had shifty eyes like, but I'm not tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he does. And the next morning, the group lands on the roof of the Monroeville Mall, the parking lot littered with the walking dead. What do they say? One of them's like, it's one of those indoor malls. Or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, were malls just fucking invented? Well, that was the thing is that they had said that the Monroeville Mall was one of the first like big indoor malls. That's crazy. Huh. Yeah. I was like, wow. Because yeah. now. The way you said it, like one of them newfangled. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mall. <laughs> you wouldn't think. And again, it's funny because now we have to explain to Gen Z what a mall is. Yeah. yeah. No shit. Like, you mean like Amazon, full- but like a yeah. bunch of them. <laughs> it's full circle. It's upsetting. I also thought it was funny that the mall's roof had a hell Helipad. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally a big H. I was like, is this just a big city thing? Yeah. That's fucking hilarious because th- that didn't even occur to me. Uh, I like, know. Uh-huh. I didn't think about it either. <laughs> but it was out. there. Yeah. I'm like, dude, there's no fucking way our mall's going to have a <laughs> oh my helipad. God. Our mall doesn't even have a mall. The whole time. Yeah. yeah. No, the whole time they're here. I'm like, if this happened here, we're fucked. Oh, yeah. We oh, got yeah. There's no, there's nothing. Yeah, everything's closed. I was gonna uh-huh. say there's a lot of room because there's so many closed stores. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, our mall has like eight versions of my favorite store. It's called For Lease. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's great. I don't know if you guys have been there. <laughs> <laughs> but Peter and Roger look down through the roof, seeing a couple zombies walking around. But it seems as though all the gates to the stores are closed, and there aren't any of them roaming around the second floor. They search for a way to get in up top, and they find the power is still running. But Francine asks Stephen what the zombies are doing. Why did they come here? Stephen tells her it's instinct, memory of what they used to do. This was an important place in their lives. That's fucking sad. Yeah. Yeah. It, again, the consumerism. Yeah. Yeah. And they, that's one thing that's funny to me about George Romero is that he had said in an interview that a lot of times social commentary is under the surface. He goes, I wanted shit in your face. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. And this is very blatant. Yeah. But through the glass, Roger finds a room that's filled with boxes labeled survivor supplies, which is a little convenient. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But Stephen asks them how they get down there. Ask and you shall receive because Peter smashes the glass. (laughs) Immediately, Stephen is dismayed, but they all drop down. It's funny because he's standing there, but he's like posed. He's holding his his, uh, firearm, but he's got it up and he's like holding his jacket or some shit. But he stays like that the whole conversation. I was like, he's what? ready. Yeah. yeah. I was like, he's, that's what I, I was like, he's fucking ready to go. He's an action hero. Yeah. <laughs> that's one thing about the glass that I thought was interesting because it seems like what they're building right now is this big conflict between Peter and Steven. Yeah. But it doesn't really reach that much of a crescendo. Right. But no. they're really planting the seeds right now. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, they're going to have to fight each other. Yeah. <laughs> But Peter and Roger clean the rooms, and after finding nothing, Roger calls it a free lunch. Francine is annoyed that the boxes contain spam. I'm like, get over yourself. Yeah. In my notes, I have Q John Paul saying to give spam a chance. Yeah, (laughs) spam's good. He loves spam. Dude, spam. I heard spam and eggs is fantastic. Oh, yeah. I got. I guess I got to give you Spam a chance. It, fry it just like you. If you would fry some bologna. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, no, fried bologna. Well, well, I'm, damn it! We've that, done this literally. <laughs> <laughs> we've done this before. Look, people need to give fried bologna a chance. Uh, as it's well. good. It's but very so is good. Spam. Oh yeah. well, I, I I still need to learn that one. Yeah. <laughs> but Peter and Roger find a stairwell, which is the only way leading up or down. So they block that door with boxes of supplies. Later on, they enjoy a little food sitting on boxes together. Roger tells Peter that he should get some sleep, but Peter clearly has an idea. There's a lot of stuff down there inside the mall that they could use. It's a big place, and the zombies are pretty spread out. They could probably outrun them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Mm-hmm. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. Roger is game, but Francine is not. 
The men get ready to head out, Peter giving Francine a crash course on how to use a rifle and leaving her to guard a sleeping Stephen. Peter tells her that she'll probably hear shooting, but don't panic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it's super chill. Yeah. Very easy to, yeah. But the men creep their way downstairs and through a long hallway into a security office. Roger snags the massive ring of keys as well as a couple walkie-talkies. After consulting a map, Roger decides to turn on the music, the fountains, and the escalators to cover the noise that they might make. This is actually very smart, I think. But at the same time, I probably wouldn't have turned on the escalators. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah, probably not. <laughs> because uh, they might not even know that that exists up there. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're like, what these buttons do? <laughs> the, the music is, uh, is a lot. See, and that's where we get to the stock music, mm-hmm. clearly. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Put me in, coach. <laughs> I was laughing laughing every time they hit a button it yeah. went bleep <laughs> and i thought that they were we were being led to believe that that was the sound the buttons were making okay so then i was like oh no it's just goofy ass yeah. like music <laughs> it was hilarious to me well there's a lot of like funny almost cartoon noises that come yeah. up later yes <laughs> like <laughs> the ricochet of bullets is the funniest <laughs> fucking noise i've this, ever heard this is where before when dude was like slapping his hand and taking his shots uh-huh it's like too fast and then you <laughs> yeah. know and then this i was like this is horror comedy i was like that's this where is, you were yeah sold. i was I, like this I, was I, it, like i said at the beginning it starts so yeah. fucking dark that where we end up i'm like how the fuck yeah how did two I get hours, here? less the- than two hours <laughs> did we get here i don't remember if it was in an interview that i saw or read yeah but i know george romero said that he considered this a horror comedy I, yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think my thing is that seeing the contrast between night of the living dead and this he just wanted to have fun now yeah and fun they did have oh yes. yeah <laughs> clearly and i know i keep saying later later well you'll know when we get to oh, it yeah. yeah uh there's one moment in particular that i'm like <laughs> are you oh, no it's great <laughs> are you really <laughs> We'll get there, but yeah. literally uh-huh. as I'm watching, I was like, John Paul loved this one. Oh, yeah. I know he did. But we watch as the mall comes to life with each turn of every switch. The zombies take notice of the noise, some even, again, like I said, accidentally riding the escalators up. <laughs> there are a couple that even fall into fountains. Yeah. Which I'm like, I don't know why that has anything. Maybe, well, I guess the motion is like, what's that? Yeah. But the men continue making their way through, reaching the mall proper. After lighting a cigarette, the men breeze past the zombies, both with force or superior speed. Francine wakes Stephen, who, after learning of their plan, calls Peter and Roger maniacs and snags the gun from Francine. Back in the mall, Roger keeps the zombies at bay as Peter struggles to get a store door open. When he finally does, the zombies are wicked close, so they have to start to fight them off. And I mean literally fight them off because Peter punches one yeah. in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have There's later, a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, I have later in my notes that I just want to smash cut of every zombie that got punched in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's an appalling amount of zombies yeah. being punched in the face. I think the thing that confuses me is that we know that the bites are bad. Right. <laughs> and so I don't want my hand anywhere near their mouth. You have a gun, just fucking pistol whip it. But he socks it right yeah. in the mouth. <laughs> The only thing that would have made this better is if every time they punched a zombie, it made that like, boing, like that. <laughs> if he was wearing like or, clown <laughs> or the like, like smacking sounds on the game. Oh, yeah. Whoops. Uh, yeah. I'm honestly, I'm honestly surprised that they didn't. Yeah. I'm sure they thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> but after the fights, they're finally able to contain the zombie and close the store door. Unfortunately, Roger loses a rifle in the process, a zombie grabbing hold of it and passing it around. Roger handed that rifle yeah. to that zombie. Well, I think at a certain point he's like, yeah, just let him have it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I think one had crawled in and he made the executive decision to deal with that rather than fight for his gun. But he's just like, all right. Like, uh, I mean, he really didn't even put up a fight. No, because he's going to get his hands bit. If he yeah. keeps <laughs> he's fucking already around. punching him. Yeah. Like, Dude. You're already risking it that much. <laughs> But this is when Steven goes to head downstairs with Francine telling him that they should go up to the roof instead. I'm like, dude, I was mad. Yeah. Well, yeah. She's like, my name's Paul. The shit's between y'all. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, is that fucking Steven says that they can't leave Peter and Roger down there. And I'm like, okay, so. Like, who are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Earlier, you were the asshole. And now she's like, let's get the fuck yeah. out of here. <laughs> Zombies are invading, but I want to go to the roof. Am I the asshole? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
But inside the store, the men are overjoyed. Peter says that they should just grab things that they need, like a TV and a radio. But Roger's like, in chocolate. And I want a mink coat. Uh, <laughs> but why not? Yeah, that's what Peter says. I mean, you just fucked up a bunch of zombies. You survived whatever you came from. Mm -hmm. I just love how much fun like, yeah. they're clearly having. Yeah, and for me, I think this is like... I don't want to say like a uh, weird pipe dream kind of fantasy situation, mm -hmm. but I feel like everybody has dreamed of being in a mall with yeah, no one there. In a mall, oh, no, like, yeah, locked absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, they did it on Saved by the Bell. Oh, but my God. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where George um, Romero got the yeah, idea? 100%. Um, well, you've said a lot of... He was listening to a lot yeah, of Pearl Jam. has <laughs> <laughs> been a lot of anachronistic things <laughs> going on. <laughs> no, but I saw the remake when I was a teenager. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, that's definitely, even as an adult, I'm like, I would go, not at our mall, obviously, no. yeah. but at like a real mall. Mm -hmm. It's like, hell yeah, dude, I could hold up there for some time. And oh, that, yeah. you know, that would be great. Especially we still have the electricity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shit. See what a lucky yeah. break that was. Yeah. Oh yeah. But this is when the, the men begin their shopping spree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steven sneaks down though, making it into that security room. The men in the store fill a wheelbarrow with supplies on the second floor and then ride down to the floor below, attempting to gather all the zombies in front of the door on the first floor. They call it the old okie doke. Well, yeah. yeah. They shout out and bang on the glass and a massive crowd begins to gather at the glass door. Peter sends Roger back upstairs, telling him to give the word when it's clear for him to come up. After a while, the crowd on the second floor has dispersed enough and Roger radios into Peter. In the office, though, Stephen finds a revolver and consults a map. But when he heads out, a zombified security guard takes notice of him. Stephen fires blindly at the bumbling Paul Blart, and he misses wildly. <laughs> he's the worst, dude. dude. I was like, you're so shooting bad. at a shadow. What that's the I think that's what pissed me off is it's not some like supernatural thing yeah. where if he kills my shadow, yeah. I'm also like, when the <laughs> fuck has that ever been a rule? It just was funny to me, the dichotomy of him being like, I'll save them. And they're just fucking having fun. Yeah. Like, it's, you're in much more danger yeah, oh, than they yeah. are trying to help them. And the thing is, I'm sorry. I feel like this is a thing that comes up a lot in this movie where it feels like Peter and Roger are exhibiting a certain style of masculinity right. that Steven is really trying to achieve. And it feels like he's going out of his way to try to impress them. Right. I can totally see that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like a lot. Well, I oh, mean, yeah, how yeah. we really got off on the wrong foot. Yes. So, I mean, I feel like, yeah, maybe he's overcompensating to the point where he's like, I'm I'm like you guys too. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But all you're doing is fucking up. But yeah. like, literally, <laughs> when we decided to go and do this, you were taking a nap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got tired. <laughs> I, and I think that's the thing. Steven CB. <laughs> My thing is that, of course, it's the 70s, so it feels like a conversation on masculinity, right. uh -huh. when really it's just a matter of logic and who is equipped to be doing this. Right. Yeah. Francine is a million times more equipped than Steven to do like all of the shit he's attempting. I right. mean, I bet she would shoot at the actual zombie and not yeah. the shadow. Not <laughs> the fucking shadow. <laughs> But unfortunately for Peter and Roger, who are just about to open the door and leave, they hear the gunshots correctly, assuming it to be flyboy Stephen. Stephen continues firing at Blart, and the bullets comically ricochet around pipes and machinery. <laughs> I was laughing my ass off. Yeah. But he finally gets them in his sights, and of course, he's out. The gun just clicks. Having accomplished absolutely nothing, he runs away. I am assuming it was at the ricochet part uh -huh. but i have in my notes i just want to talk to whoever was in charge of sound design <laughs> <laughs> it's literally like pew, pew, pew. Yeah. So funny. it is amazing but the men open the store door peter manning the wheelbarrow as roger provides cover back in the boiler room situation steven is able to load one bullet before paul blart finds him and throws him to the floor in a tense sequence steven russian roulettes his way to the one bullet in the chamber putting an end to the mall cop he grabs his rifle and a notebook from the office and heads out. Unfortunately, he then stumbles into three zombies struggling with them in the hallway. Yeah. 
Peter reaches the same hallway, but tussles with a zombie himself, eventually just picking him up and throwing him over the railing. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He yeeted the shit out of that dude. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And it, it's clearly a doll, but yeah. it's fine. No, it was hilarious. It's yeah. great. When Steven runs into the three, is that when he walks through the door looking behind him? Yes. Of- yeah. <laughs> Oh damn. God damn it, He dude. is so ill-equipped. Yeah. <laughs> it's staggering how bad you are at this. But Steven, I don't do that with no zombies. No. Like, yeah. you, look, you look into the room you're going in. Who yeah. goes anywhere backwards? <laughs> but Steven goes to rush up the stairwell, and Peter stops him, saying that he'll lead the zombies right back to Francine. He provides cover for Steven to join him on the other side of the hall, leaving the wheelbarrow and heading back to the department store with Roger, closing it up. I have to call out Steven's high knee running. Yeah. (laughs) He only had one shot, man. Yeah. (laughs) It's the funniest shit. I, I laugh out loud every single time I see it. But as zombies gather outside, the men run downstairs to repeat their trick from earlier. Unfortunately, on the way, Roger is tackled by a zombified custodian played by John Harrison. Now, you may know the name John Harrison because he directed the Tales from the Dark Side movie. Hey! (laughs) Peter can't line up a shot, so Roger is forced to kill the zombie himself, grabbing a screwdriver from its tool belt and jabbing it through the ear as blood pours out. Unable to loosen the custodian's grip on a sweater tied around his waist, he just leaves it behind and the men rush downstairs. Just left, dude. Uh, he, he's got it. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's, yeah, right. <laughs> I love how they didn't try to kick the zombie in the face. Yeah, or... like, dude, he's like, uh... It's nah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be all good. There was something I learned here because earlier when they're starting their shopping spree, right. that's when Roger grabs the sweater and ties it around his waist. Ah, all right. And they filmed some scenes later uh-huh. and realized that they did not have a scene of him losing it. Oh, oh fuck. And all so right. literally on the fly, yeah. they call up, I guess John Harrison wanted to be a zombie in the film and they were How like, hey, funny. can you be <laughs> this zombie? Right. On the fly boy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the sweater is gone and continuity is solved. <laughs> All right. Continuity is restored. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because people are paying so much attention yeah. <laughs> to the sweater. To the sweater. Yeah. But the men triumphant, Peter even giving Steven some kudos, make noise to attract the zombies once again. Francine, growing impatient upstairs, checks the stairwell and takes a seat at the top of the steps. Unbeknownst to her, a Hare Krishna zombie peers through a door, opening it and walking through the hall that leads directly to the stairwell. Played by Maynard James Keenan. Clearly. (laughs) Obviously. (laughs) More timetables not really adding up. (laughs) But back in the department store, the men try to figure out a plan, with Peter saying that they actually have a good thing here. If they get the supplies back up to the loft, they could actually stay here for a while. Stephen recalls the map that he consulted in the notebook, showing some kind of pathway above the stores that they can use to get around. Now, this is what I'm talking about is like wanting to be kind of like one of the guys, Mm -hmm. because when he shows it to them, he smiles like, see, I'm useful. Yeah. 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 And it's honestly kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah. Because he has not been thus far. Right. <laughs> well, the helicopter. Did, well, I yeah, was going to say, but say. on the cool he without did get him. him out of there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they wouldn't have uh, escaped. True, but he did fall asleep. Yeah. He did. <laughs> But Peter realizes that it's a duct in the elevator shaft, and after opening up the elevator to find it, sends Roger to get a tool to open it up. The men climb on top of the elevator, and with Roger's newfound tools, open up the duct and crawl through. Peter once again gives Steven kudos for finding it. And it's at this point that I'm like, maybe they aren't going to fight and kill each other. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe things are going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. In the stairwell, Francine hears a noise at the bottom and calls out to Steven, thinking it's him. Upon seeing the bald gray head of the Hare Krishna zombie, she runs back into the room, blocking the door with boxes. I mean, she should just chill. He's just wanting to know why they can't not be sober. (laughs) He just wants to start this over. And she should really just let him. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He looks like Maynard James. He does, yes. (laughs) Well, he's at the bottom of the... I got nothing. (laughs) I have a very limited knowledge of tool songs. <laughs> 46 and 2. So <laughs> the men <laughs> navigate. It's not even a lyric. No. Oh, it's a title. <laughs> I did my best. I showed up unprepared. I didn't have any. <laughs> but the men navigate their way back to the hallway where Peter rescued Stephen, which is now completely empty, and they jump down. 
Francine desperately searches for a weapon as the Hare Krishna zombie makes it inside, knocking over some boxes. She finds a flare and lights it, thinking that she can keep him away with fire like he's fucking Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. But then it actually seemed to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, we don't like fire? Yeah. Oh, no, we don't. Yeah. It's like, I was okay. just, <laughs> just going to give you a pamphlet for now. <laughs> But the men quietly collect the wheelbarrow and head back up the stairs to find Francine trying to climb up and away from the Hare Krishna zombie. Rather than shoot him and attract the attention of the zombies downstairs, Roger enlightens him with a few bashes to the skull. Enlightens? Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Stephen rescues Francine, who again just cries in his arms. Roger and Peter move the zombie into the hall, Peter remarking that it looks like they're going to be okay. Stephen tries to tell Francine about all the great stuff that they found below, but she just sits there almost catatonic again. Yeah, I'm like, I'm going to need her to woman up real quick I, or they've lost yeah, me. Like, I, yes. I, I was already ready to vote her off. Yeah, I man. Was like, no. Well, okay, because this is 1978. Mm -hmm. The Stand came out the same year. Oh, and shit. That's a protagonist named Fran as well. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh, hell yeah. You know, everything's right. set up for me to love this bitch. And all you're doing is not helping mm -hmm. and crying and staring. <laughs> <laughs> so and staring. I'm, my patience is wearing very thin. I think my thing is I was thinking of timelines as well. And I'm like, man, okay, so the same year you got Laurie Strode fucking kicking Hell ass. Yeah. Yes. You got 79. You got Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. I'm like, you better do some you shit. You better yeah. fucking bring it, Fran. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting very annoyed. But the men eat and drink, switching on the television to see the logo of the emergency broadcast network that definitely is not superimposed on top of the shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sidebar, was Peter eating fucking caviar? Yes. Yeah. That's my next note. Is he yeah. eating caviar? LOL. <laughs> but I mean, if it's there, yeah, I mean, yeah. why not? I've always wanted to try this. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. But they switch on the radio, cycling through the frequencies until they hear a voice. The man on the radio says that no one is allowed to occupy private residences, no matter how safe they think it is. He also says that the president has sent a package of initiatives to Congress because legislation will clearly solve all these problems. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The president's like, no, I meant 2000 total. Yeah. yeah. So gone, yeah. <laughs> and his supporters are like, well, when you add it up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did laugh, though, because I was like, you know, I'm sure this is Congress. Some of these motherfuckers are probably pro-zombie. Yeah. <laughs> so they're not. This is just bullshit. But Francine sits alone in an adjacent room as the men wonder if she's OK after everything that's happened. Peter gets more specific, saying that she looks sick physically. This is when Stephen drops the bomb. Francine is pregnant. <laughs> no, he goes, she's pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> what, like, he's so sad? Mad. Yeah. <laughs> This is when we cut to Francine holding a lit cigarette. Yeah, I was like, God damn <laughs> yeah. it, dude. You're just losing points. Oh, losing yeah. points. <laughs> it's like, did they know in 78 that this was bad? <laughs> okay. Probably not. Maybe I mean, not. Maybe not. But Roger says that they should probably find a doctor or something. And Peter says that this doesn't change anything. He then asks Stephen if he wants to keep the baby. Stephen's like, what? Peter says, do you want to abort it? I know how. Stephen's like, no, let's go to sleep. I uh like would have had some follow up questions. How you uh -huh. want to yeah. do that? Well, that's a good question. Uh, and maybe you should be asking Francine. Right. That was my problem. Is that <laughs> there? Like, it's very odd. She is not only the person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The she, pregnant person. She is within earshot, mm -hmm. yeah. and you are not bringing her into this conversation right. about her body. No. And she's just sitting there like. Did he say no? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it's, say it's, something. It seems Talk. like she gets annoyed uh, at yes. the wrong part of this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I was just confused. But Stephen goes to check in on Francine and she puts out her cigarette immediately. She is annoyed, telling Stephen that his decision is clearly made. She repeats what Peter said. Do you want to abort it? And Stephen asks if she does. Back in the other room... Peter says that someone is going to have to keep watch constantly and not just from zombies. Anybody could poke around and see their chopper and want in. In their adjacent room, Francine says that she guesses that Canada's just off the table now and that nobody cares about her vote. Stephen's like, I thought you were sleeping. That's a, that girl, is, we yeah. don't know your vote. Well, no. we, you, we, you've never told us your vote. I searched the actual script and found one mention of Canada, and uh -huh. it's this scene right here. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, maybe you should have mentioned Canada. Yeah. Then. I was I was just, so is this your girl or is this like, See, I don't. I was confused too, because I know that they're 
she's pregnant by him. Well, yeah. I don't get couple from Stephen and Fran. I don't either, but he's not comfort you know she's no. pregnant yes you're not comforting her you don't even go in the room and sit next to her no he's like you're i'm just, going yeah. after them give me that gun yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like i'm gonna have a conversation about your body with these yeah. other yeah. like what the you stay fuck here by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah smoke that cigarette yeah it's good yeah. i'm just like what's really yeah, going on i, I, I don't know if it, it's down to to writing or like if stuff got cut that maybe fleshed it out further that we just didn't get but mm-hmm. i'm i don't yeah. i don't get it i don't know i will say that his urgency to get her on the chopper and not leave her behind no matter what makes sense right. now it does so that is solved for me but also i do feel like his motivations are just weird they just don't they don't feel romantic at all no yeah it's just, <laughs> i was trying to think i mean it's just he, a no for me he has comforted her but i was laughing thinking about if the father of your children was currently being attacked by a zombie wouldn't you kick the hammer over <laughs> yeah. yeah see and then that too so did she want she's like fuck get him get him yeah no oh you almost got it get him get him yeah like, like the, did you want him to die no, she's did like you? fuck my kid's gonna be weak uh, bro <laughs> yeah. it's like it sucks it's bad <laughs> Like those are your jeans, yeah. Jesus God, Christ! Damn kid, it. kid will know how to ha- fly a helicopter. There that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's ingrained. Yeah, that's it's already- <laughs> yeah, it's like the Matrix is programmed in. There you Born go. with the little jacket on and the <laughs> aviators. <laughs> Considering both her desire to leave earlier and her interest in going to Canada, Stephen reminds her that she was the one who wanted to set up house. I guess this is a conversation from the past, right? Set up house referring to what? Like maybe live together? Yeah. yeah. And so he's like, this is the best shot we got. Is this, <laughs> is, is this here loft the mall. Yeah. <laughs> with those other two guys? Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of fucking zombies yeah. downstairs. Hey, look. You, this is what you meant, right? Well, you gotta make lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. But the next morning. Over shots of zombies inside the mall and in the parking lot outside the mall, we hear a voiceover from a man on the television. He says the creatures are not cannibals. Cannibalism implies an interspecies activity, and these things are not human. They prey on humans, not each other. They have no reasoning, only remembered behaviors from their normal life. As the zombies continue to gather and shamble, the voice says despite reports of primitive use of tools, the creatures are nothing more than pure motorized instinct. It's like, what would we say? The id? Yeah. yeah. This fucking uncontrolled. Yeah. Yeah. Run amok. Yeah. Yeah. Which is in its own way, very frightening. Mm-hmm. We cut to the television to see the man speaking. It's Dr. Miller Rausch, a scientist played by Richard France. He says they are no longer our family or friends and they must be destroyed on sight. There you go, JP. So there's, you can just fuck them up, I guess. (laughs) You have science on your side, apparently. (laughs) I'm just saying, look, if this is what it takes, I mean, we've got to do it. I get the three week thing. Like uh-huh. I, I promise you it would be hard. But if <laughs> if if <laughs> hard for you. Why are I you mean, smiling so hard? I know. <laughs> it would be hard. <laughs> <laughs> but you're looking at me like, mm-hmm. No. Yeah. What, I'm looking what is- at you like if this shit happens, you go ahead and take point because you're ready. No, I'll keep you in the bathroom locked in there. <laughs> oh, smoking wow. a cigarette. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, you're a zombie. What are you talking about? Oh. Um, Wait, so if I wouldn't kill you. I'd keep you in there, <laughs> feed you the, the the neighbors. You know, you'd be all right. That's so kind of you. Yeah. You're so sweet. <laughs> hey, I didn't kill you. <laughs> feed you the neighbors. <laughs> That's actually very cool. <laughs> I gotta be honest well, with you. <laughs> or you can be the zombie in the bag that doesn't, that can't move. <laughs> yeah, just chomping at the air. Dealer's choice. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I pick the bathroom, uh, please. <laughs> see, and you get a toilet. You can take a bath when you want. Yeah. Feed me, feed me the neighbors. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a sweet life. But Francine watches the television intently. On the roof, the men, with the use of their binoculars, see a ton of trucks at loading bays in a nearby building. Roger says the trucks are the answer to blocking the interests of them all, saying that they should put one at each door. Francine continues watching the television, where a commentator played by Howard Smith says that scientists are looking at the whole situation as a virus and are doing lab models to see if there are answers to it through virology or vaccination. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. 
interesting. Yeah, this is getting. <laughs> this is where I was like, "Come on, man!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm already scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> Too close to home. Yeah, but the men head back down, getting armed and ready for the truck plan. Francine facetiously says that she would have made them all coffee and breakfast, but she doesn't have her pots and pans. She then says what I have been hoping to hear for forever. While she's sorry that they found out she's pregnant, she does not want to be treated any differently than they treat each other. And she refuses to be their den mother. That's what's up. Yes. I'm like, okay. Uh, well, maybe There's she hope. just needed a kick in the pants. I, There's you know what hope. I mean? Like, she was like, what the fuck's going on? She actually seen it firsthand. Mm -hmm. Maybe she was a little, you know, shell shocked. And now she's like, all right. I gotta, you know. Which I mean, it's understand. I would be freaking the fuck out. Yeah, <laughs> it would take a long time to get used to this. Yeah. You're like I will be the den mother. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what what kind of coffee? <laughs> Dark roast. Got it. <laughs> but she also says that she wants to know what's up, and she wants to have a vote when it comes to plans. Stephen is annoyed by this. Yeah, he didn't understand. I. This is your wife girlfriend i don't yeah i don't i just don't understand why he's so annoyed peter gets it though and he tells her what the plan is but he does tell her that she's not coming with them until she learns how to handle herself that is a fair point which is yeah. fair it's not no, you're yeah. not coming with us right you know but steven it's stuff like this where i'm like are we supposed to like you or not like it keeps yeah. going back and forth see and, and that's that's the point kind of what jp had said about steven being useful in one way yeah mm -hmm. If he couldn't fly the helicopter, he wouldn't be coming with them. Yeah. No. Yeah. So no. he's lucky that he has one skill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Francine says one more thing. She wants to learn how to fly the helicopter. At this point, Steven is a silent film of annoyance. He's like, yeah. Steven's like, now hold on. Yeah. Slow down. Now. Right, that's my job. <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> But she very rightly says if anything happens to Stephen, they need to know how to get out of here. She's yeah. right. And Peter agrees. The men head out, but on Francine's insistence, they leave her with a gun. Stephen is pissed. Why? Why? <laughs> I... <laughs> She's got no, okay, in his <laughs> mind, what is she, some fucking damsel in distress, right? Uh, she can't come with y'all. Yeah. She can't learn how to fly the fucking helicopter. She can't make decisions about her own uterus. She, by that token, couldn't defend herself. Why would you not give her a fucking gun? Yeah. He's like, look, if, if they get in, <laughs> I mean, yeah. the brakes. <laughs> I just don't, I don't fucking get this character. I know. <laughs> I really don't understand. And th this part annoyed me a lot because Francine apologizes to him. Yeah, yeah fuck I off, didn't. man. I don't like that at all. No. And she tells him to be careful as they leave. But again, the whole thing is that I would think that... <sighs> It bothers me that he isn't seeing her as equal. He's like, oh, she wants to fucking stay alive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she needs a gun to protect herself. I think that's what made me laugh is he was, <laughs> he was merely mad about the helicopter thing. Yeah. But then when she's like, and I also want to protect myself, he's like, a gun? Yeah. Like, are you fucking kidding? Me? Like, I don't understand this guy. Maybe he's afraid she'll shoot him. And maybe well, he should um, be yeah. afraid. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I think, honestly, I think it's coming from a place of just his insecurity. Right. If she is better than him at the things that he is the only thing that he can do. Yeah. Then why do we need you? We don't. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think he sees that. He's forecasting yeah. that. He's like, oh, shit. And he's afraid. <laughs> it's like, shit, if I teach her the controls. <laughs> no, he's like, I'll teach her to crash the helicopter. <laughs> And then they'll have to use me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm Steven and I don't think it's I have. It's a foolproof plan. Yeah. <laughs> but outside, Peter and Roger commandeer two of the trucks while Steven follows overhead in the helicopter. The men joke around with each other over the CB radio, finally reaching the mall, and Francine watches over them from the rooftop. They're fucking Starsky and Hutch or what? I was like, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck? I was like, this is a buddy yeah. comedy. Yeah. <laughs> They had said on that featurette that I guess they rode to the set together. Yeah. And so they have all these like inside jokes from uh, like I fucking love around. That. And so this was all like improv between all them. All right. But the trucks barrel through zombies at the entrance and Roger steps out to join Peter in his vehicle. Now we see fucking zombies fly. Yeah. Like 
I laughed out loud because one of the zombies is clearly Tom Savini. Oh, like, yeah. I swear well, I see his facial hair. <laughs> I read that they had no money for stunts. Mm-hmm. And so Tom Savini and his assistant did all the stunts. Dude, they stepped up. Like, Damn. there is. It's unbelievable because there's a few later on that I'm like. <laughs> Tom, please. Yeah. <laughs> well, I read that it had gotten to the point where he was kept telling George Romero, I bet I could fall from there. I bet I could jump from there. Yeah. Like, he just wanted to keep doing yeah. shit and they had to, like, rein yeah. him in. Like, we want you to be at the premiere. Yeah. Because, like, he, he hurt his back. I can't remember falling from something. Yeah. He was supposed to fall. Oh, there, and, I know that scene. Yeah, yeah. And was stuck in a, like, a golf cart, stuck oh. doing stuff in a golf cart for days because he fucked his back up. Well, but he was just, no, I, I could do that. I, yeah. I could fall from there. It's like, Tom Savini's a fucking yeah. badass. Like, he is. It's like, we're not even on set. No. Like, what, are you, what are you doing? We already wrapped. Yeah. He's like, Tom, it's 2012. Yeah. <laughs> just let me fall. Yeah. Let me jump from there. <laughs> As Roger makes his way to Peter's vehicle, he knocks a few zombies along the way, including one who oddly caresses his face for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I think this is the thing about Romero zombies is that there is like 1% human left. Yeah. yeah. So it's like they're remembering well, something. Like, yeah. <laughs> back at the <laughs> mall when they got Steven in there all running and stuff, the mannequin that gets them in the store or the, the <laughs> zombie that gets him in the store was posing as a mannequin. Yes. yes. <laughs> so he was a practical so joker. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. And I think that goes to what you had said about them moving each individually. Yeah. yeah. They each have their own personalities from when yes. they were alive. Yeah. I, that's one thing that kind of bothers me about The Walking Dead is they send them to like. They're all the same. Yeah. 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 They send them to zombie school. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. Teach yeah. them how to be zombies. And so you get basically there's one zombie language yeah yeah Yeah. i like this better i i yeah i really appreciate this approach Mm -hmm. because he foresaw that Mm -hmm. they're all gonna fucking look the same if i tell them what i'm looking for right so yeah interpret dead yeah however you're gonna interpret it it's like Shaun of the dead when they were posing yeah Yeah. (laughs) everybody had their own style man but once roger is inside peter speeds off to go get another truck three more peter says However, the truck's moving in and out, and Roger's incessant shouting attracts the attention of nearby zombies. Roger is fucking having the time of his life. <laughs> He's having too much fun. Yes. This motherfucker, like, dolphin jumps out of <laughs> one of the runs. <laughs> yes. I was like, what? I, for real, stopped the movie and could not stop <laughs> laughing. I must have watched that, like, five times. I was like, he did not just fucking jump out of the truck like that. I just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> i get look you know love the job you don't yeah. work a day in your life but this is this is very dangerous yeah. no it's a lot and then the whole time it sounds like video game music is it playing. Does. yeah <laughs> but roger hops out to hotwire another truck and steven takes notice as the zombies approach that truck that roger is trying to hotwire he foolishly leaves the passenger side door wide open He's flying too high, man. (laughs) It's like, I am invincible. (laughs) But one zombie bangs on the driver's side window, getting Roger's attention, as another on the passenger side grabs for his leg. Do they really like it? They're like diverting him. (laughs) It's like, I'll I'll get his... I don't understand. But Roger struggles to get free and grab his rifle, shooting the leg grabber in the chest. With the help of Steven, Peter realizes what's going on and heads out to help. The driver's side zombie reaches a tire iron as Roger continues to struggle with the zombie that he shot. Peter arrives on the scene, urging Roger to hold the zombie's head up so he can get a good shot. He finally does, blowing its brains out, blood spraying all over Roger, who kind of smears it and rubs it in. Yeah. (laughs) It was at this point that I was like, they just said the shit about the virus on the TV. So I was very worried. But doesn't really add up later. (laughs) So it's fine. But the other zombie smashes through the window with the tire iron, and Peter tells Roger to move so he can take the shot. Instead, Roger pulls his pistol, firing three shots into the zombie's head. It looks great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I also thought, I mean, it's very smart that they kind of cast off this small sentence that the scientist said. Right. He's like, now they have, you know, some primitive use of tools, but they just move past it. Yeah. Yeah. That explains the tire iron. Yeah. I thought that was pretty neat. But Roger looks transfixed and just repeats, you bastards. Peter's like, Roger? Yeah. 
This is when Roger snaps back to life, saying that they've got this thing by the ass. And he says it a few times. Yeah. Back to his normal energetic self. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Peter tells him to snap back because they've got a lot of work to do. He sits behind the wheel. And when asked if he's all right, Roger stoically responds that he's perfect. Clearly something is wrong. Oh, yeah. Yes. The men bring the other truck back, Roger intentionally running over zombies along the way, laughing as he wipes the blood from his windshield. Tense music grows as the men arrive back at the mall, Roger even more reckless in running over the corpses. Instead of heading directly to join Peter, he starts firing off at the zombies, infuriating everyone involved. He dives into Peter's passenger side window, narrowly avoiding a few bites thanks to the crack shot of Francine from the rooftop. He's doing too much. Yeah. yeah. I think it's right here when a zombie almost bites his ass. Yeah. And I laughed because that zombie had more than enough time <laughs> to bite his ass, but he was just looking at it like, oh, this is going to be good. Yeah. And yeah. Then he lost it. Well, he had to get the Instagram photo yeah. first. <laughs> <laughs> it's his dinner. But I personally, again, very much appreciate seeing how shitty of a shot that Steven was. Yeah. And Francine's like a regular Franny Oakley. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's like give her the fucking gun. Yes. Yeah. What were you going to do with See, that gun? you were so pissed earlier. <laughs> You're yeah. sh- you shoot shadows, <laughs> Steven. <laughs> she shoots zombies <laughs> in the head, dude. Full offense. <laughs> you shoot shadows. But Peter speeds off with Roger in tow, Roger realizing that he forgot his bag in the other truck. Peter stops and grabs him, telling him he better fucking shape up. He's not just risking his life, he's risking Peter's too. Roger finally chills out and they head back. Roger then reaches through the windows to the other truck, but drops his bag and is forced to jump down. Zombies press in on him, everyone doing their best to keep them at bay, but in the frenzy, we watch as a zombie takes a bite out of Roger's arm. I think it's right before he gets bitten. He like does a swing kick. Yeah. Yeah. Was, I was. He's just showing off. <laughs> I, it was hilarious. And it was short lived because he got bit right after. Yeah. Yeah. Like, God damn it. Fuck. Because he's like, like it <laughs> looks hilarious. And I, I just really, I know we already talked about it, but the bites, oh they my just God. look so mm-hmm. fucking good. And dude is biting through, like, I don't know how they rigged that up because they're biting through a sleeve. Yeah. So the part of the sleeve has to come off. You got to yeah. have the blood. It yeah, looks yeah. so good. Yeah. I did laugh though, and I know I shouldn't because I was very sad at the fact that Roger got bit. Right. Because I love their dynamic together. Yeah. But it made me laugh that he saw his new best friend get bit and Peter just goes, damn yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all he has well <laughs> roger was acting yeah. a fucking yeah. fool man that's true he was like there's a possibility he's not coming yeah. back <laughs> he's like i've already got that in my head but roger socks the zombie that bit him and as he pulls himself into peter's window another zombie takes a bite out of his leg francine sits distraught on the roof as the truck pulls away Inside the truck, Peter says that's it and they need to deal with his leg, which is bleeding profusely. Roger bandages himself up, saying that there's a lot left to get done before they can afford to lose him. Was that a fake leg that was sitting on the on the dash? Because that looked like he was sitting at a weird angle like that. I think it's very possible. (laughs) Probably. Because that leg never moved. Uh And then every time he talked, I was like, is that that (laughs) that attached to you? But the group, including Steven, head back to their little loft where Francine fixes Roger up the best she can. Peter checks in on Roger, but the show must go on as Peter and Steven refocus their mission on stockpiling guns and ammo. Through the ducks, they climb down into a sporting goods store. They load their packs with bullets and grab a few rifles from the shelves as zombies gather at the gates. Okay, if I may. Yes. Mm -hmm. What in the fucking Monkey Island music is the point? Can you imagine having to fucking work at the store and just oh, rah, 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 the whole time you're working? These tribal rhythms, oh, yeah. I was very confused by. It was the monkey sounds for me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's supposed to be what? Uh, tropical whatever? Well, I have a fucking or... eight hour shift here. Yeah, I would oh, no. lose my goddamn mind. I took it as like a safari almost. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Too much. There you go too much but well, that's like that restaurant and that one mall in dallas that we go through that has the safari see they probably yeah. play the same song oh, i man. my heart's out to them <laughs> holy fucking he's like shit. it's that fucking toucan was, song yeah. again <laughs> uh th- these guns to me i i i used to be a gun owner were very pretty uh-huh. um but i do want to ask real quick so i know i mentioned again earlier back this is 78 uh-huh. so were the bite rules established here or yeah, like so from, they already know then yeah. okay 
Like uh, from Night of the Living Dead, I think, and on. Right. That okay. was my question. Well, no, I mean, like I remember them, like in the movie. Well, th- that comes up later because okay. Peter has a line about it. Right. All right. All right. No, I, I was thinking the same thing. And then I, well, I was thinking from the audience point of view. Mm-hmm. But then no, I was yeah. like, oh, no, yeah, well, we did, too, we did yeah. do that in 68. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like you see it now and you're like, oh, he's fucking dead. Uh, <laughs> well, because they said about the virus and all that. But I was like, do they know? Yeah. Like, is I, this the time that they know? I think they're trying to figure out like how and why this started. Right. They did the same thing in Night of the Living Dead where they're like, is it from like fucking nuclear shit? Like yeah, what yeah. is going on? Okay. Yeah. But and they're also trying to figure out how to solve it yeah so i mean they don't know what the fuck's going on yeah. <laughs> they try to send us uh fourteen hundred dollars and call it yeah. two thousand so. <laughs> peter lines up the sights on one of the rifles and steven for some reason thinks that peter is actually going to fire on the zombies so he starts loading his revolver peter's like marge not here yeah <laughs> <laughs> like so what the fuck god he tells him that the bullets will just ricochet off the gate and it's like why do I have to tell yeah. you that? Pete's like, it will sound hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of us could get very hurt. It will not be worth it. <laughs> but as he looks through the scope, Peter jokes that the only person who could miss with this rifle is the sucker with enough bread to afford it. That's, That's great. great. Uh. Yeah. The men chuckle, grabbing and stashing tons more guns and ammo as some, again, the safari music is playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those poor employees it's like the goddamn bird like i'm gonna it's not as bad as the bird from fucking cabin in the woods yeah. <laughs> but no no it's not still rough but later on the entire group raids the mall even roger who is being rolled around by peter in the wheelbarrow they make their way back to the department store wreck and shop as steven and francine get the doors open again steven knee high the entire way yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just amazing <laughs> But once inside, the couple heads for the hardware section while Peter and Roger take the elevator down. Peter tries to have a heartfelt chat, but Roger tells him that he knows and to just shut up. So sad. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was very sincere and they handled it like a couple of bros. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, they know what's up. Yeah. But on the first floor at the window, Stephen lights a couple of torches that Francine holds way too close to her Farrah Fawcett <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> situation. There's so much hairspray in there. I'm like, you better watch it. Yeah. <laughs> but Peter says that they need to lock the main entrance, but Francine says it's too risky. Thankfully, she spots a car on display and suggests that they use that. Peter checks that Roger is okay to start it, and he gives the thumbs up to the new plan. And I don't mean to be like morbid, but if he gets chomped again, it's what's it going yeah. mean, It's fine. <laughs> I mean, like, he's the one to get yeah. chomped. Yeah, even if he's not cool... <laughs> <laughs> this is the plan <laughs> he's not getting any better yeah. <laughs> but they open the doors keeping the zombies back with some of the old ultra violence as well as torches Steven the idiot wrestles with the keys that are still on his belt trying to get them to Francine who is providing cover as the zombies surround him I was like oh my yeah, god I know. <laughs> he's like oh yeah fuck <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry 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 it's just like unbelievable <laughs> He finally gets them to her, high-stepping it over to the car with Peter and Roger. Roger crawls into the back of the car, his legs dangling out as Peter keeps the zombies at bay. Some lady zombie, an absolute dickhead, just (laughs) reopens Roger's leg wound. (laughs) She didn't even try to eat it. She was trying to unwrap the snack. (laughs) (laughs) But thankfully, she gets her head blown off by Peter. Roger hotwires and starts the car, finally getting the men inside, and Stephen provides cover from the trunk. There is a very interesting moment here where Francine notices that a nun zombie has her habit stuck in the door and she just lets her go instead of killing her. Right. I read that she was originally supposed to kill her, but Romero came up to her and said, we can't kill a nun. (laughs) (laughs) We're taking it too far. We've done enough. (laughs) Didn't she even kind of walk away or she's kind of like, yeah, it's like almost like she's saying thank you. Thanks for saving me. (laughs) But the car speeds to the main entrance, Peter and Steven getting out to secure the doors. Steven hits the latches while Peter locks the door. Peter calls the doors pretty indestructible, Mm -hmm. but they look thin as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) But the the funny thing I saw in that featurette is that they borrowed this car from a dealership. Mm -hmm. I think there was the production designer. She said that she begged them to let them use it. And they fucked this car up. Oh, I mean, of course course they did. Yeah. Yeah. They're hitting zombies. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> tumbling over and they just turn it back in they're just running tom yeah. savini over <laughs> over and over over again. and over he's like i bet i could get hit by that car <laughs> could do it a few more times yeah 
But Peter says that he hopes that the zombies will just go away after they realize they can't get inside. I don't know when that's ever yeah. happened or okay. worked. But he wisely tests the alarm before they pile back into the car and head to another set of doors. Stephen calls into Francine, telling her that they're okay and that this is actually going to work. They get out of the car again, Peter saying that the plan is to get all the doors locked, then go on a little hunt for all the zombies currently inside. We get a really sad moment of Francine loading her revolver as a zombie just sits down in front of her and they lock eyes through the glass. I was like, is that zombie in love with her? Yeah. He's like, this woman is beautiful. Yeah. He's like, hey girl. That's the one percent left. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's crazy because they're looking at each other and there's like a vacancy on his end. Yeah. And like a somber, like, I don't know. But I guess, I mean, if you're seeing what has become of humanity, yeah. it's pretty fucking sad. Yeah, and a dude that you're with just got bit. I yeah. mean, there, there's a lot. That's true. There's yeah. a lot to unpack here. I mean, in a split second moment of a fuck up, that could be me. Mm. Yeah. It's just, it's a lot. Zombies are fucking, they make you look at yourself, <laughs> man. They do. They're us. <laughs> <laughs> we are the walking yeah. dead. <laughs> <laughs> but the group reconvenes together sometime later, observing the lower floor from above, littered with twice killed corpses. They return to their loft, Peter and Stephen planning further fortification, while Francine shoots Roger up with what I assume to be painkillers. That's what I assumed. In all fairness, he's on his way out anyway. She has no medical experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's literally using a, for a syringe with no idea yeah. what she's doing. Well, so I'm like, this is... I, I mean, come on. That's I mean, the yeah. You want fucking Steve to give it to you? Or no. Do you want, He'll I mean, yeah. fucking inject himself accidentally. Yeah, he's a fucking stormtrooper, dude. <laughs> he's like, oh, the syringe is tied to my belt. Yeah. It's yeah, like, oh, what God, the no. fuck? How? It doesn't even have a... <laughs> But Stephen suggests that they board up the stairway, but Peter tells him that soon enough, real people will come through here, and he doesn't want anyone to know that the stairway even exists. Francine puts a cold cloth on Roger's head, coming out to tell the men that she's not sure what else she can do for him. She says that his leg is awful and that the infection is spreading quickly, and asks if they can take him to a medical facility. Peter tells them that he's seen plenty of people get bitten, and none of them lasted more than three days. We then see Roger thrashing awake in bed, calling out to Peter. He's like, hey, Peter, we whipped him, didn't we? Peter's like, yeah, man. It's so yeah. sad. <laughs> we sure did, buddy. It's like a lot. It's like in war films where the soldier's dying. Yeah. And they're but like, they don't realize yeah. it. Yeah. But then they say shit like, we, didn't we kill Hitler? And you're like, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Whatever, man. As long as, you know. We killed him twice, dude. Yeah, Old for you. Yeller, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Good man. It's just sad because I feel like he's putting on airs yeah. because he's trying to be like, no, I'm still Roger, yeah. but you're, you're not. Yeah. yeah, you're losing it. But later on, Peter and Steven are working on some kind of frame or wall, sawing and nailing together a ton of two by fours. I was assuming this is a facade situation that they were going to use to right. hide the door, which is super smart. I would have never thought of this. Yeah. Or have had the capability to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the den mother. We know. Yeah, yeah, I know. I think I could go out on some runs, <laughs> yeah. but I would be best to make the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when Steven heads into the other room for more supplies, he finds Francine doubled over in front of a toilet. He goes to check in on her, but she's not down with him watching her Ralph and tells him to just leave when the sickness starts to come on strong. Get the fuck out. Yeah. She tells him a ton she, of times. I was going to say, yeah. she has to tell him like five times. She's like, you want me to rub your back? Yeah. <laughs> she's like, get the fuck out of here. Now you want to be fucking <laughs> decent, dude? But Steven returns to Peter in the hallway, who after surveying all the corpses that they left behind, says they really need to start to clean up the place. So to the tune of some upbeat music, we watch Peter and Steven collect all the bodies, place them onto carts, and wheel the corpses into a freezer unit. Very uh, upbeat music. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I don't know why this was played for laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> I don't either, but I love it. I feel it. like we're That'll at do. the turning point of the film almost where the, it's just going to be funny yeah. for a minute. Yeah, this bit is like a little montage. <laughs> yeah. I wrote that this film gets a montage point yes. uh, we love a montage mm -hmm. uh i was like hell yes yeah. i was very happy <laughs> but francine even joins them in the mall proper with roger reclining in the wheelbarrow afterward the two men head to what appears to be some kind of bank and after stumbling upon some fat stacks take their fair share of the cash oh yeah i mean absolutely that place would be fucking empty oh, oh yeah, yeah. Peter says, you never know. Mm -hmm. But then he's like, money, money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so hard. 
But they also pose in front of the security camera with their stolen cash. Yeah. Well, who the <laughs> well, fuck's going to stop yeah. them? Yeah. <laughs> really, who's going to stop me? There's also a sign that says, ask about our student loans. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, guys yeah. are so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Later in a clothing store, to the sound of some honky-tonk piano and banjos, the group gets an all-new wardrobe, and then they raid a grocery store, cracking up and bonding, yeah. eating olives out of the jar like Elaine Binnis. <laughs> <laughs> And grinding $40 worth of coffee. Yeah. yeah. And taking cheese wheels. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and also the largest fucking loaf of bread I've ever oh, seen. Oh, <laughs> man. Another pausing moment. And yes. I was laughing <laughs> was my hilarious. ass off. Well, fucking Steven gets the small loaf and yeah. Peter's like, no. He's yeah. Like, oh, yeah? <laughs> um, this, to me, definitely felt like 28 days later nods to this 100 percent. yeah the jovial atmosphere uh -huh. the picking and choosing of your shit yeah. yeah it that scene owes a lot to this for sure but as the shopping spree continues francine gives steven a fresh haircut before the four of them in the day together in the arcade and i was like this is what i'm talking about yeah. this is what we would be doing yes yeah. you got them all to yourself man let's go play guitar hero <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would be cool too to just be in an arcade like that full of those old ass yeah games. yeah yeah retro yeah that would be super cool i was no like zombies but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say i always liked air hockey but i feel like that might be too dangerous <laughs> <laughs> But decked out in all new clothes, the four stand on the second floor, overlooking the massive crowd of zombies that have gathered outside the locked entrance. Francine is surprised that they're still here, and Stephen says that they're after them. But Peter thinks that they're after the place. They don't know why, they just remember. He says they're us after all. And then he says, when there's no more room in hell. Francine asks him what that means, and he says that it's something his grandfather used to say. He was a Macumba priest in Trinidad. He used to say... When there's no more room in hell, then the dead will walk the earth. Iconic. Yes. Mm -hmm. To me, this is one of the greatest lines I've ever heard in my life. I agree. Right. And there's a ton of eerie music that sells the absolute fuck out oh, of it. Oh, yeah. I'm like, this is one of the greatest moments in cinema. <laughs> 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 but after another shot of vacant zombies, we cut to some time later and see Roger in his bed screaming and thrashing as Francine and Steven attempt to hold him down. Francine grabs some morphine, and downstairs, Peter having just completed the facade wall, which looks fucking excellent, by the oh, way, yeah. he hears the commotion and climbs up the ladder into the ducts to make his way back to the loft. He relieves Francine and Stephen from their duty, offering to stay with Roger. After they leave, he cradles Roger and wipes his forehead. He looks terrible. Yeah. He looks like hell. Like... I know, terrible, but it looks so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he looks like dude inside of uh, Saul and the, when he's <laughs> all fucking... He looks like a ghost when he cuts his leg off. I'll come for help. <laughs> it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm going to bleed to death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that he still kept his doctor's logic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Gordon. But Roger asks him to take care of him when the time comes. He doesn't want to walk around like those things. He says not to do it until he's sure, but he says that he's going to try very hard not to come back. That broke my heart. Yeah. yeah. That was so incredibly yeah. sad. I was like, damn. <laughs> it's the way that they're sitting there together. Yeah. And the way that he keeps repeating it. He's like, I'm going to try. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, man, you, ah, uh, it's heartbreaking. It yeah. is. See, this film takes you through the emotions. It, no. Yeah. It, it absolutely does. A lot because, of laughs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of fucking laughs. Because in a in a, just a little bit, I can't believe that I was feeling like this. Yes. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> and it sucks. Like you were saying, he just found his new bestie. Yeah. They were having the time of their lives, and he was so full of life. And he's like, "This might work." Mm -hmm. And then you flew too high. Yeah. Uh, he was doing a lot. Yeah. Like no. I'm, I'm not here to victim blame. <laughs> But he was he showing was. his whole ass, doing was. flips, fucking screaming. <laughs> he was, like, he was doing like, yeah. <laughs> he was fucking loving it. He was doing too much. I will say that is smart, though, because now we see the contrast. Yes. Yeah. Because he was very animated. Yeah. yeah. And now he is yeah. not quite sickly. <laughs> yeah, not. <laughs> but on television, Dr. Rausch, the scientist from earlier, seems to be advocating for feeding bite victims directly to the undead. <laughs> okay. That's what, what I was getting from this? Yeah. Steven is watching and he's like, good God. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. But when the commentator doesn't respond positively to this suggestion, Dr. Rauch then calmly suggests dropping bombs on all the major cities. As you do. Mm -hmm. Right. 
He says that they won't run out of food as long as we're alive. This is just an odd solution, man. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But Peter sits drinking Jack straight from the bottle, keeping watch of Roger, who is now covered in a blanket. Ken Forey said this was a real bottle of Jack. It wasn't switched out for tea. Oh, no. Yeah. I'd need a drink, too. Yeah. Yeah. And he said that it was fucking freezing. Like the entire time. Oh, man. They're filming in like a I think Pittsburgh winter. Oh, Jesus. And so, I mean, I think they even said that one of the days that they were filming, he asked the crew, he's like, hey, when's the food getting here? And they're like, we're snowed in. There is no food. Coming. Holy shit. <laughs> so now like, get to act. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that bread you were old enough? <laughs> That's it. Like, that was real bread too, right? Yeah. <laughs> the thing though to me is that we see some zombies and they talked about this on the featurette that are either like fucking shirtless in their underwear. Right. It's fucking freezing. Yeah. Man, that sucks. Uh. These people showed up and Christine Romero. She is, she was also the assistant director, by the way. I forgot to mention nah. that. But she mentioned that they were paid like a dollar and a donut. Yeah, that's what I read. Yeah. And a, a T-shirt. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. That's wow. even better. <laughs> I was like, I would do it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but that shows the devotion of these extras. Yeah. Yeah. I read that there were over 200 of them. God damn. damn. And Tom Savini's crew, there were only eight of them. Oh, fuck. To and do all took, that makeup. Yeah, it took yeah. like three hours for the the makeup God. and so that it's just crazy yeah i see why some of them are just gray yeah, yeah. like i'm sorry dude <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's all i have you're not putting that's all cut got marks in me. No. all kinds of shit on everybody like, every 20th zombie will get a wound <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but after a few moments peter notices motion under the blanket as the argument continues on the television peter aims his gun as roger lowers the blanket revealing his face His skin is wrinkled in gray, his cheeks are sunken in, and in his eyes is a vacant sadness and realization. Francine finally reacts to the argument on screen. She says, it's all over, isn't it? Just then, we hear Peter fire his gun. Dr. Rouse says that we have to remain logical. It's that or the end. Just heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Um, I think on the TV, he was like, this is not the Republicans versus the Democrats. I'm like, I, yeah. I'm about to fucking turn this off. Dude, yeah. <laughs> I really just can't do it anymore. Too scary, George. <laughs> it's too much. But goddamn, Roger looked terrifying. Yeah. That that whole, this whole sequence is so sad. I feel like this is the last time that I feel that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But while I felt it, I was it, it hurt. Like it was very yeah. sad. I I think that this film kind of needed that moment. Yeah. Because there's been a lot of levity. Mm-hmm. There has. And so to bring it back and, and make it real. And much yeah, more to yeah. come. Oh, yeah. I feel like we, of course, like Roger and his friendship with Peter. Mm-hmm. But if they would have just added a little more characterization, yeah. oh, this yeah. would have fucking hurt. Like 100%. This, it it would have been more impactful. Oh, Not yeah. that it wasn't, mm-hmm. but they really could have taking it up a notch right i'm a fucking sucker i'll cry at anything like <laughs> the, it would have gutted me if we had gotten to know roger a little bit more yeah anything uh-huh yeah man what if he like told peter some of his dreams and when he was cradling him he was like hey we're going to blah blah, blah right like you know what i mean no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just a I'm little already yeah. Something, yeah just a little over the thing and he's like yeah buddy we're going there. yeah yeah no i, I, I can't sorry no. and now it's just become a game of can i make nate yeah. cry <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes <laughs> But in the next scene, Peter and Stephen bury Roger's body among plants in one of the common areas of the mall. Afterward, Francine and Stephen engage in some target practice with the help of some mannequins. I was glad to see that finally Stephen doesn't suck ass. Yeah. He's been practicing. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I got to get good now. Yeah. yeah. The helicopter's not going to be my thing forever. No. <laughs> <laughs> it made me laugh because like he was so hesitant to have her a gun and she's making him a better marksman. Right. Yeah like yeah. fucking let her fucking live yes yeah. but that night though all dressed up peter very kindly treats francine and steven to some fine dining as he sits down the plates francine asks what about him and he says that it's just for the two of them like, how nice of him yeah. yeah he pours some wine and then leaves yes francine drinks some of the wine she she does i mean she's yeah. drinking she's smoking <laughs> yeah fuck who gives a fuck i the guess the end of days but Peter stands at Roger's graveside, opening a bottle of champagne and toasting to him before taking a drink. Very sad. It's incredibly sad. Yeah, that that I was like, man. Yeah, I was like, that sucks for mm-hmm. real. But at least he got to bury him. 
True. You know what I mean? Instead of having to throw them off the edge, you're leaving them somewhere. Mm-hmm. He had a yeah. chance to... Like a real ceremony yeah. kind of a thing. But back in the restaurant, Stephen offers Francine a wedding ring. And after mulling it over for a moment, she hands it back to him, saying that they can't. Not now. It wouldn't be real. Well, I'm like, a yeah. wedding ring? You don't yeah. even fucking act like you like her I, unless I she's know. vomiting. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? He's like, look, I think we can all agree that Peter's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, so I heard from Beyonce, I need to lock this shit yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> but it made me laugh that she said no because this seemed like the moment that it would be like the swelling thing. Right. No, good, f- good for yes. her. No, yeah. <laughs> Nobody needs a Steven. (laughs) No. (laughs) But later that night, and possibly after some flesh showing, I do not know. No, they're they're naked, so I'm assuming so. We pulled back from a very depressed and incredibly awkward shot of Steven and Francine in bed, staring off into space in separate directions. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I was like, is this the breakup? Is this... I don't know. They both Uh, had, I've made a huge mistake energy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe it was, uh, I guess, one more time. Yeah. I mean, I don't... Before we die. Yeah. It it was... uh, I was like, what the... I rewound it because I was like, I must have missed Missed something. something. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, did she throw the wine in his face? Like, what? (laughs) I I was just very confused. But after some nice shots of the sun setting outside the mall, Francine marks days off the calendar to show us that a lot of time has passed. (laughs) When we see her fully, she is showing much further along in her pregnancy now. Yeah, they've been there for a while. Yeah. And I think they had said, what, that she was three or four months pregnant earlier? Uh Uh-huh. So who knows how long, how many months it's been now. But on the roof, Peter plays a solo game of tennis one of the balls bouncing off and into the parking lot to reveal a crowd of zombies still rocking about outside trying to get in. It's like, oh, don't, they're, they're not gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't forget. But back inside, the trio passes the time with records, card games, alcohol, and Francine giving herself a full beat. Did I say that right? You did. Okay. <laughs> um, she's giving, I'm writing a letter to daddy. <laughs> it was a lot of blush. Um, no, it was a lot. Uh, while she's doing, you know, her glam squad thing, mm-hmm. there's an announcement over the intercom mm-hmm. and it says that some special or some deal if you make a purchase of five dollars or more. Oh. I was like, what the fuck <laughs> even <laughs> was money in the 70s? Dude, I dude? don't know. Like, what could you buy? I can go to the mall and buy one fucking thing for a gumball. God, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's really gumball. It. And that was uh, Christine Romero's voice, too. I thought that was uh, funny. Dude, what didn't she do on this film? Yeah. Uh, I think I read that she played a zombie that got cut later in the film. <laughs> Damn it. Did you also know that she's the namesake for Stephen King's Christine? <gasps> oh, wow. No. Right. How cool. Yeah. They made a whole ass apartment in here, too. Dude, for real. Yeah. It's I like mean, furnished. Yeah. And- yeah. <laughs> But in the card game, they're like betting thousands of dollars. Yeah. Because I guess money's useless now. Right. But later during dinner, Stephen goes to check the television, which is nothing but static. When Francine says that there hasn't been a broadcast in three days, he says that they might come back on. Annoyed, she gets up and turns it off herself. Stephen then gets up <laughs> and making full eye contact with Francine, turns the TV back on. I was like, oh, we are not in a good yeah. place. No. So... <laughs> I did laugh because him turning the TV on, Francine goes, what have we done to ourselves? Yeah. <laughs> this is a little dramatic. Well, kind of an overreaction. Yeah. But I will say it kind of fits in with like the commentary if you're looking at all the things that they've accumulated. Right. The material possessions. Yeah. They're not happy. Yeah. Well, no. So yeah. I mean, it might be a commentary there, but if it's just about him turning on the TV, calm down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we? <laughs> Nobody like threw a plate or anything. <laughs> but in the next scene, we see Steven teaching Francine how to fly the chopper. She is overjoyed when she's able to land it, and the two smile and embrace, finally in a good mood again. Was it just me, or did she like miss her cue, or did she, because she like stared blankly for a while, and he was like, you did it. You landed. Oh, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, what? She's, she's like, I so pale. And he's like, you're yeah. on air. Was that just me? Or no, no, I, I whole, the, everything about them it's very strange. is confusing to me. I, <laughs> I partially took it as that she was just in awe at the fact that she did it. Yeah. And he's like, you've done it. Yeah. Oh, oh cool, man. 
I also thought it was weird that after the scene that we just saw, they're laughing and hugging. Yeah. And- That's what I'm saying. I don't know if like stuff is out of order. Yeah. I, I Maybe he proposes to her after he teaches her how to fly. <laughs> uh-huh. And then she says no. And then they're an old married couple hating each other and fighting about the TV. Uh-huh. I, uh, the, the, order, <laughs> the, <old married couple. laughs> the order of events was very confusing to me. Yeah. I think what was happening was... You know, she gave up. She was like, look, dude, we don't need the TV. They're not going to fucking do the broadcast. And he's like, no. Mm -hmm. And that's what she's like. Oh, my God. This is what we're we're living by this fucking TV. Okay. You know what I mean? I I took it as we need to get off our asses. Go teach me how to fly this fucking plane because we've done nothing. That's that's better than her being like, we're monsters. (laughs) (laughs) She just seems really empty. Like She's alone on the skating rink. She's trying to serve face as Sophie would do. She's (laughs) trying to fucking... It's like nothing's working. I'm stuck here with fucking baby daddy. Like right. we don't like each other anymore. What are we? Well, like what have we done to ourselves? They're just sitting there bullshit and getting all that stuff. Yeah. Not one time did y'all go learn how to fucking fly the thing. Y'all just started learning how to shoot. <laughs> that's true. They you got caught I mean? up with material possessions. Yeah. That's that's a really good point. Instead of the necessities. Yeah. That's very yeah. But I would like a cheese wheel. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> can we do both like what the fuck yeah, right. we'll go train and then we'll eat the yeah, cheese wheel <laughs> done and done I mean right. I don't understand that's Prioritize. the reward right yes, yes. <laughs> for every landing you get a cheese wheel <laughs> <laughs> I will say I mean Argento has his own cut of the film so who knows how he put it together right I'm gonna have to watch it yeah I'd love to see yeah but unfortunately we see the chopper land through a pair of binoculars it's a couple of raiders Blades, played by Tom Savini, and another played by Rudy Ricci. Sex Machine! Yes. Love to see him, even though we kind of saw him before. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Even though we've been seeing him. It's fine. (laughs) Blade says that they must have gotten in through the roof and then blocked off all the entrances. They agree that they'll hit them tonight. Blades then combs his mustache with a switchblade comb situation. Yeah, like not a mustache comb. <laughs> I didn't know that it, th- this exact thing existed. Yeah. And I swear to God, I heard someone say, is that a comb? Like really low. Yeah. I <laughs> swear did. I heard that. They did. Because I was like, did they really say that? I rewound it a lot. I don't know if that was someone behind the camera. Yeah. Like, what the fuck I, is Tom doing? <laughs> I remember at the old arcade, if you had enough tickets, you could buy one of those things. Ah. <laughs> See, maybe he's been to the small <laughs> right. he's like we're going back that's where I got this comb <laughs> <laughs> but inside something starts to come through on the radio it's Rudy shouting over the rest of his crew who we see is at least a few dozen people Right. it's a lot Rudy tells our trio that they saw the helicopter on the roof also Rudy has an SS sticker on his helmet I was gonna ask so fuck him forever uh, yeah. is he uh, friends with Wooly I think so he, w- he was, was part of the no. yeah Wooly okay. <laughs> 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 I hope he joins him very soon yeah but completely surrounded by his gang Rudy lies saying that there are only three of them but they don't like people who don't share and he lets them know that they have fucked up real bad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have fucked up now <laughs> His gang cheers loudly, and his crew of men and women pass out weapons, get on their motorcycles, and get ready to raid. This is where it goes Goes off. (laughs) I think that's very fair. You mean this is the best part of the movie? (laughs) Now, I do want to say that I saw in that featurette that this biker gang is made up partially of members of the crew, Mm -hmm. but it is predominantly a real biker gang called the Pagans. Uh, I, that's what I thought too. Looking at him, I was like, "Man, some of those guys look like real bikers." Yeah, <laughs> they're real. Yeah, and uh, I think they said that they had them for two nights of shooting, and so they all this stuff that we see. God damn! Oh, nice. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But Peter and Stephen watch from the roof as dozens of motorcycles speed down the road off in the distance, knowing that they will get inside and make short work of the dead. Considering they've survived this long, mm-hmm. Peter vows not to make it easy for them. I will say, and I might just be at my own ass for a moment but there's a shot where they're spying with the binoculars right and then they set them down and they kind of wriggle back and stand up it is almost exactly the same as a shot that appears in Django Unchained and I know Tarantino picks the weirdest shit from everywhere I would not even be surprised not at all yeah not at all but I was like I see you yeah (laughs) (laughs) 
But back inside, they tell Francine that there's about 15 to 20 of them outside, but that they're going to go downstairs to shut the gates and immediately head to do just that. Steven, knee high, runs the whole way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've come to expect yeah. it. From him. It's, it's almost like when they give a video game character a run. Yeah. And this is just how you run. <laughs> so he's just pressing X over and over. <laughs> <laughs> but the motorcycle gang makes it outside, obliterating zombies with grenades, brute force, and firepower. Inside, the men shut the gates, but the raiders are able to make it through the entrance, riding all the way inside and even bringing the van as the alarm is sounding overhead. Yeah, that was really easy. And I was fast. like, God damn <laughs> Make it. I thought you were going to make it yeah. hard. Right. <laughs> but as they circle around the fountains, Peter and Steven chat over the walkie talkies. Peter saying that they're going to let thousands of zombies inside, which will take the heat off of them. Now, I saw on a bunch of sources that Apparently, the sound of all these motorcycles, mm -hmm. like inside the mall, <laughs> Romero was like, first of all, he was in awe of it. Yeah. Because when you write something, you don't expect what comes right. from it. He's like, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> but he was also so amazed by it. Yeah. So he's had some conflicting things. And Tom Savini was just over the moon. I'm yeah. sure he was. I did also want to point out that sidebar, there's this like weird rumor or myth that I always mm -hmm. hear that in Romero films, they never use the word zombie. But Peter literally says, though, we're going to bring zombies <laughs> <laughs> in here. So I was like, what the fuck? There it is. Dropping the Z-bomb yeah. right there. <laughs> but the Raiders break into store after store, living up to their name. They raid the place. <laughs> <laughs> They're fucking up zombies along the way, having a blast. They even rob a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> they, she's trying to eat them. Yeah. And they yeah. fucking snatch her jewels. They well. do. I mean, she was flaunting a lot. Right. She was. What were you doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why are you at the mall? I realized I just said rob a zombie. <laughs> like, rob zombie. <laughs> we love him. Yes. Everything he's ever yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the point when they engage in literal clown shit. Yes. <laughs> this is when I was like, I John Paul was having a fucking blast. Oh, no, right. yeah. We did not watch it together. I knew he had a blast when he yes. watched this. I did. <laughs> they steal pies from a bakery <laughs> and start pieing the zombies in the face and spraying them with seltzer bottles. Wouldn't those pies be rancid and moldy as fuck? I thought that they... Yeah. Peter's like, we were making those for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were made this morning. <laughs> the, I, oh, the joy that right. this whole little thing brought to me was fantastic. The look on that zombie's face when they pie them uh -huh. and... <laughs> <laughs> He's I already laughing. Because well, you and used pie as a verb. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's what they did. They did. They pied his ass and then they squirted him with the water. The surprise on his face. Yes. He was like, Did you really fucking squirt me, dude? Do you think he that that's what that <laughs> man thought was going to happen to no. the zombie? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, I was going to eat some flesh. What the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> goddamn. See, I've seen several of my friends yeah. get shot. I thought that was what yeah. we were doing here. <laughs> but. <laughs> The raid continues, and for some reason, Stephen decides to get territorial and doesn't answer the radio when Peter asks for him. He aims his gun, and he's like, it's ours. We took it. It's ours. And he starts shooting at the raiders. I think it's about here. I know it's after the pies, because <laughs> I had to remind myself that I wasn't in a fever dream. I'm actually still watching the movie. Mm -hmm. um, they toss a bunch of money up into the air, yeah. and you clearly hear a voice go, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I was, <laughs> it was just a camera I was guy. Laughing, yeah. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. There's another line that like shouldn't be said that happens in a minute. And I had, I had to pause because I was like, this is the fucking funniest. What is happening? <laughs> I well, laughed because Christine Romero had said that she hated the pie bit. Yeah. But George was like, her. come on, man. I don't blame her. I don't blame her at all. But also, I understand why it's very fun. Yeah. So I'm torn. But very furious, Peter tells him to stay out of sight. They're just after material shit. They don't even care about them. But as soon as he says that, the raiders start firing up to the second floor at Peter. Stephen is able to get into the department store and locks the door behind him. Peter says, now we've got a war. This is why we can't have nice things. Yeah. No. Um, I think it's around this time as well. The other line that I was like, <laughs> is this really happening? There's a dude, I guess, fucking around still. Mm -hmm. And a guy comes and grabs him and goes, 
what are you doing playing around when someone's shooting at us? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Because he starts playing one of the games. He's yeah. like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> what are you doing, dude? I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> Did the guy already check his fucking blood pressure? Not yet. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> it's just like, was there any direction here? Or was it just... I think Have they... Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, I couldn't stop laughing. They did say that kind of during this part, they just have a bunch of shit going on everywhere yeah and so they send the camera operators and the director of photography yeah and they're just running around taping random shit <laughs> and so anybody gets an idea sure i'll fucking yeah, you know fuck play it. a video I'll game, play the arcade game. <laughs> yeah he's like someone's shooting at us yeah dude, like stop <laughs> But through the chaos and the crossfire, we get a couple of pretty cool machete kills from Blades. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There is one, I think it was the grip of the film, he asked, or one of the grips anyway, he asked George Romero, Mm -hmm. he's like, can I be a zombie in this? And then 24 hours later, Tom (laughs) Savini planned that machete kill. (laughs) Like, unbelievable. A fucking master, man. And it looks great. Oh, yeah. But one raider, played by Tony Buba, shoots his way into the department store where Steven is hiding, letting everyone inside. Now, my problem was that he shot the lock on a glass door. Yes. And it did not break. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe they're strong like Peter said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the locks are weak, though. Yeah. When they're going over there, they pass a store called Floorsheim. Oh. And it made me think of friend of the show, Henry Floorsheim. <laughs> hey. Yes. How's it going, Henry? Hey. The reason I named Tony Buba is because he was also the sound recordist for the film. Everybody's just fucking jumping in. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot like Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But they continue their raid and vandalism as Steven high knees it to the elevators. Is this when they're fucking up the TVs? I think so. Because yeah. <laughs> one, guy, <laughs> one guy picks up one of the TVs and another guy goes, what the hell are you going to watch on that thing? And he goes, I don't know, man. And then breaks <laughs> yeah. but He picks up a sledgehammer and just starts breaking yeah. all the TVs. He's like, He's nobody's like, going to yeah. watch anything. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It was just, you could tell what you said about everybody doing random shit everywhere. Yeah. You can definitely, that tracks. Yes. Yeah. Because, oh my God. It's not even organized chaos. No. It's just chaos. <laughs> but Peter, to his credit, is able to pick off a few of the straggling raiders with his rifle. He then shoots a bottle out of Blades' hand, which inspires him to run up to the second floor in pursuit. Before they can face off proper, the lights shut off, which gives Peter the cover he needs to retreat back up the ladder and into the ducts. Blade sees it, though, and stabs into the duct, taunting him with, I see you, chocolate man. Oh, no. (laughs) What the fuck? I don't know what's happening. (laughs) I don't know what's happening. I understand that his friend is a racist. (laughs) So maybe uh, infections are spreading. All right. That's all I'm trying to say. (laughs) But in the elevator shaft, Stephen can't make contact with Peter on the radio, so he tries to make his way to the ducts. Unfortunately, the power comes back on, sending the elevator back down. The raiders know that he's up there and fire at him, hitting him in the shoulder, and it looks really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They asked Tom Savini how he did that, and they said that they put a blood-filled condom in his sleeve. <laughs> I feel like they just bought a bunch of condoms. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> a bunch of condoms and pies. Yeah. <laughs> he said, you'd be surprised how often it, the answer is a condom. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but the other raiders continue showing off, trying to get the zombie kill of the week. But just as Blades is distracted by zombies, Peter peeks out from the duct and shoots him dead. He falls from the second floor into a fountain. Tom Savini, is. this is the stunt that we're talking about. Yeah. Where he hurt himself? Yeah. They set up a bunch of mattresses and boxes. Right. And I guess the first time he did the stunt, because he did it more than once. Oh my God. Of course he did. He missed the boxes. Oh, fuck. But if that happened the first time, that implies that he did it again. Well, yeah. That's what I just said. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. After he hurt himself the first time. Oh, yeah. Well, he had to yeah. learn. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> He's like, man. well, that's not what not to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh Give me back up there. I bet yeah. I could I I I do, do that. that. I got it this time. <laughs> oh, my God. But then Peter just starts picking them off one by one. Some of the raiders retreat out of the mall, but Peter nails one in the shoulder, leaving him to be devoured by a group of zombies. I believe this guy was played by Tasso Stavrakis, who helped Tom Savini with a lot of the makeup stuff. Oh, nice. Wow. And a few of the other raiders are also overwhelmed and eaten too, including one who, for some reason, felt now was the perfect time to have his blood pressure checked. I, 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 
I laugh so hard because, first of all, it increases as he's torn apart. Yeah. <laughs> as it should. As it should. But I laughed really hard because he's literally running from zombies and he's like, rah, rah, and he, he does, puts his he arm <laughs> into the thing. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm so confused. He's like, I've always wanted to know. <laughs> That's his death yeah, wish? Yeah, I guess. Hypertension. What? <laughs> oh, my God. I want to say that the organs and shit that they do in this part, yeah. it's amazing looking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tearing these people open and everything. Tom Savini said, I understand that the organs look very clean. Right. He said it's because they were. <laughs> <laughs> well. I guess a butcher, there was a shop down the street from where he lived. Right. And so he just got some organs and they oh, just used nice. them. I think it was cow. Really? Yeah, from what I read. I also feel like the scene in... There's a scene in Shaun of the Dead when there's guts being torn out. And I feel like that has to be a nod to this. I feel, yeah, I would agree. But Stephen collapses into the elevator, calling Peter on the radio. Peter tells him to climb up the shaft and into the duct, and he'll get him to safety. In various scenes of gore and carnage, we watch as the zombies rip raiders open and feast on their flesh and entrails. So I guess this is where right. yeah. I was impressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately for Steven, the zombies now officially have the run of the place. And as he's almost out of the elevator, he is snagged by a massive group of them. They bite his legs and pull him back into the elevator. He tries to fight back but they initially overwhelm him, chomping his neck, his once white shirt stained all over with mm. red. With that cool red, too. Yeah. <laughs> Not fly boy. Yeah. I know. He's about to be die boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's finally able to get them off of him, shooting several in the head, and the doors close. Poor guy, man. But yeah. it, he kind of sucks. I, mean, I was so, going to say, uh, half poor guy, half... All right. Yeah. I mean, it's better him than Peter. Yeah, oh, yeah. for sure. So... I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to be positive yeah. here. <laughs> but after he's unable to get Steven on the radio and hearing the gunshots, Peter seems unsure what to do. He angrily punches a wall and runs off down a hallway back to the loft where he finds Francine waiting with a gun at the top of the stairs. Tears in her eyes, she asks if Steven is dead and Peter says that he doesn't know. She goes to run down the stairs, but Peter stops her, taking her gun and saying that they'll just wait and see. Time passes and Francine can't wait any longer. Steven hasn't answered the radio for hours. We watch as the zombies downstairs roam everywhere, a group of them bumbling their way to the elevator. The doors open to reveal a fully zombified Steven who shambles out with the rest of them. This is one of the greatest reveals I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. No, it was fantastic. His face was actually frightening. Yeah. And his zombie shuffle is top yeah. notch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, see, you're good so, at something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we just needed a way. Yeah, it's not just the helicopter. But the zombies step over money, knock down merchandise, and Steven eventually makes his way to the hallway with the facade wall. He remembers. He then leads all the zombies in the destruction of the wall, a massive crowd of them finding their way to the staircase. Peter closes the door, telling Francine to get out of here. When she asks, he tells her that he doesn't want to go. I do not know why. Yeah. I was like, do you just like the law? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got some sweet furniture, but... <laughs> it's not worth it, dude. No. Steven, though, finally makes it inside the loft. <laughs> he closes the door behind yeah. him. He's like, Ooh, all right, guys. <laughs> all right, don't leave me. Yeah, so what's the plan? <laughs> I'm like, you are a fucking zombie, dude. <laughs> hey, at least he closed the fucking that door. That is true. <laughs> it, it's habit, right? Yeah. That's what he said. It's the 1% left. Yeah. <laughs> but Steven is immediately shot in the head by Peter, brains and blood spraying against the wall. As more zombies make their way inside, Peter forces Francine up the ladder onto the rooftop. Once on the roof with a couple of bags, Francine runs to the chopper, getting inside and starting it. Peter sneaks around as zombies invade the area, hiding in one of the rooms with the doors closed. The helicopter blades whir as zombies make their way onto the roof as well. The door down below budges as Peter watches, slowly placing a gun to his head. Once the door breaks open, he takes the gun from his head and as triumphant music plays, fights against the zombies, miraculously making his way up the ladder. As Francine lifts off, Peter makes his way onto the roof, fucking kung fu, like he fucking does the double yeah. kick thing that I tried to do when I saw Mortal Kombat when I was a kid and couldn't do it. <laughs> but he's just whooping zombie ass. Eventually, a zombie takes his gun but just holds it curiously. Peter climbs his way into the chopper, closing the door as Francine takes the chopper up. He asks how much fuel they have, and Francine says not much. He just responds with, 
All right. From the rooftop, the zombies watch as the helicopter takes off, getting smaller and smaller as it disappears into the morning sky. Through a montage of shots of zombies reclaiming the mall, the credits roll, and there's obviously some very stock music playing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, I think you wanted to say something, Nay, because I had read in the original script that the ending was bleak as fuck. Yes. And yeah, there make was him an, away toys. <laughs> <laughs> there was an alternate ending where when he's holding the gun up to his head, he mm. kills himself. Right. And then Francine stands up and basically decapitates herself in the um right helicopter blades. what are they called blades yeah, yeah. on the <laughs> helicopter they didn't end up doing it i well i guess george romero was like that's a bit much yeah. <laughs> like, we need some hope probably right, right, because right. of the ending of yeah. night of living dead that was bleak as hell it was yeah it's like don't fucking yeah. do this uh, again is this just your trademark but, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh, from my understanding from stuff that i read a head was made for Francine to decapitate herself right. because it's fucking Tom Savini. Right, right. He's like, I'm not letting that head go to waste. Yeah. So they painted it and that's the guy's head that explodes at the beginning of the film. Uh, all right. <laughs> so that's why I was like, I can't say anything yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. You're like, hold on. Yeah. yeah nice. But uh, he's like, oh, we're not. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. using yeah. this shit. Reduce, reuse. Absolutely. <laughs> Recycle. <laughs> but I have to ask the customary question. What did you guys think of Dawn of the Dead? So the football highlight reel music from him running through the room <laughs> to the chopper, uh, that was a lot. Uh-huh. Um, but I did enjoy this movie. Like I said, I, ha- I don't think I've seen this movie all the way through. So getting to watch it in its entirety for the show, I really enjoyed the shit out of this movie. Um, I, I still like the 2004 one a little more <laughs> but but i can't but in i can't even really say that in fairness because this is i mean it's like they're two different movies they are yeah, yeah. Uh, and this one oh my god there was such funny shit going on here <laughs> uh i don't know who to thank for that if it's romero or uh <laughs> Savini? sex machine yeah whoever yeah. thank you thank you yeah hell yeah I figured I didn't know if you were either going to really enjoy this movie or hate it completely. So I'm glad to hear that you right. liked it. I think what I think the comedy is what what uh, sold it, and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, this is me. When I, I like, saw the pies, I was like, <laughs> oh, no, that's, yeah, it. Yeah. that's that's it. That's what did it. Yes, <laughs> one point for every pie. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had a lot of fun with the film. I feel like it raises a lot of conversations. Uh, we talked about like gender roles mm-hmm. and, you know, there's socioeconomic stuff to be explored from that apartment building or whatever at the beginning. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of correlation, unfortunately, in real life. Yeah. Now. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. There's just a lot to unpack with it. And at the same time, there's pies in the face. <laughs> 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 it's, this really runs the gamut of human emotion almost oh, yeah. mm-hmm. like you're kind of going to feel a little bit of everything watching this but i really enjoyed watching it and i had even more fun talking about it oh mm-hmm. yeah um i when we got here i was like i'm worried that i'm not going to have a lot to say but <laughs> clearly that wasn't the case <laughs> this was this it, this movie is just really a must see i would oh, agree yeah. It's one of those classics that everybody needs to see. Yeah. That's why Richard Rubenstein needs to fucking yeah. make it happen. Yes. But I feel like, I mean, for a film that deals with such bleak subject matter, mm-hmm. it is so goddamn fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it's unbelievable. And the stuff they were able to do at the time. Yeah. Like, some of these effects, like, hold up beyond... Oh, yeah like what you would think and the crew all pitching it it just it feels like a family affair almost mm-hmm. yeah where it's like oh we don't have a blank i can do that or yeah. i can fill in <laughs> yeah and tom savini fucking doing every <laughs> job like it's just it's fantastic i remember they had said that i think they had the run of them all for like a few weeks like mm-hmm. certain hours right and there were some times that they had them all 24 hours a day. Damn. So they worked 24 hours a day. Oh. Well. And it's like, man, you know, the dedication to doing that, yeah. like, that's just impressive. I think the film on its own is kind of revolutionary for the horror genre. Right. I would agree. And I feel like, I mean, with all the overlapping things, it seems like it's kind of Night of the Living Dead on a grander scale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of things that happen in the film that are very similar to other things that happen in that film. Oh, yeah. But I feel like they 
seemingly had more fun with this one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Undoubtedly. But I guess that leads us into ratings. Um, this one's kind of hard. I was between a couple numbers today. But on the positive side, the special effects are amazing. Mm-hmm. The social commentary, like you said, I mean, it's not just consumerism and materialism. It's gender roles. There's it's a lot. Yeah. Socioeconomic divisions, the fucking government. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot and kind of a bit of satire in there, too. Yeah. yeah. And the media. Yeah. Oh, like, yes. There's a lot. Oh, yeah. With him being like, keep it running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. It's a lot. I just feel like, I mean, so much of it feels of its time. And to me, that's charming. Right. Because I love the 70s and the feeling of the 70s on film. Because you're a vampire. Because we weren't talking about <laughs> <laughs> But I think, like you had said, you can feel the love that went into making it. Mm-hmm. And to me, that pushes a film up more and more. For sure. On the negative side, I mean, I love the dynamics of the characters, but I feel like they are a little thin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would love to see some more fleshed out. Not Francine's remark in the helicopter. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no. That can stay. That can stay in the script. Out. But I'd love to know more about these people, especially for spending so much time with them. Oh, yeah. You know? And it's such an isolated cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like we don't have oh, let's go see what they're doing. It's Mm. like, no, it's just the four of y'all. So, you know. And now I do know that Romero's first cut, I think it was two hours and like 38 minutes or something. Mm -hmm. So it's possible, but it's in there. Right. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot, so many goddamn versions of this movie that we should go and check out. Right. Just to see what they did with it. Mm -hmm. And we might actually be satisfied on those fronts. Oh, yeah. But for me, out of 10 apocalyptic shopping sprees, (laughs) I considering how much i love this movie and how much fun i had talking about it i'm gonna give dawn of the dead nine apocalyptic shopping sprees out of ten this movie is a ton of fun i had a blast today i hope everyone had a blast listening no. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but i will now open the floor to you my thing is kind of the same thing the character development uh i wish we knew them a little better because mm-hmm. i did like roger and then i mean it, yeah, it sucked that he died, but it was like, I, I don't really know you enough yeah. to mm-hmm. care. This should hurt more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Stephen and Francine, I wish I would have got a little more of what was going on there. Because, I mean, yeah, we get it that she's pregnant by him, but that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, what else? Y'all don't even yeah, seem to like I, I know. <laughs> yeah. What, was this a, a mistake hookup? Was this a, you guys were trying again and then this happened and you... you realized it wasn't going to work but now you're trying you know what i mean anything yeah. give me something to care um <laughs> to not care? That I, well you know what i mean <laughs> well, not they're... that i didn't care but the, like you said t the, their story is very minimum mm-hmm. like there's nothing there and they, their relationship goes through all these weird yeah it's uh, yeah we i don't like know what's each other. going we on we hate uh, each other we're flying together we hate yeah. each other. yeah <laughs> <laughs> what have we become yeah <laughs> <laughs> But I did enjoy the shit out of this movie. And you're right. The pie, the <laughs> pie scene. I was like, this is what it is. Um, the humor, the like, just I was like, this is this is this is what I want in a zombie movie. Right. You know what I mean? I was like, I do enjoy the shit out of this. Um, I do understand the charm. But like I said, I, I also I want it to look a little better, <laughs> but I get it. It's 78 and it looks yeah. great for the time. Yeah. And I fucking appreciate this shit. Everything they did on this movie. Cause this is like you said, if you've never seen it, go watch it. This movie was a lot of fucking fun and it was fantastic. Uh, but for me on a scale from one to 10 apocalyptic shopping sprees, I'm going to give Dawn of the dead an eight. I won't lie. If it stayed serious the whole time, it might have kind of lost me. Mm-hmm. And not saying that it, it would have been a, a bad movie, but it would have been different. If it would have kept that same pace like they did at the very beginning through the whole movie, mm-hmm. we wouldn't have got the pies in the face. You know no. what I mean? <laughs> no, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have. have got dude jumping out of the truck like a dolphin. We wouldn't have got them <laughs> running through the mall, cleaning up the zombies to wacky music or him turning on all the switches and it making Boing? Yeah. yeah that's a lot yeah but i feel <laughs> like all that and the seriousness of what was happening meshed well together and yes. i was like this is really good like how have i not seen this but i'm very glad uh that it was requested and we did cover it yeah yes thank you gory bits indeed yes. um 
I really I have nothing else that you guys didn't already say. I will say that my the biggest sin to me really just goes down to the characterization. Mm. Just the fact that the cast is so small, if you don't count, you know, all the zombies and the right. the SWAT team at the beginning and everything. It, it's really just the four of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we get that Peter's a badass and Steve's kind of a fuck up. And right. Roger's hilarious. Roger's yeah. funny. <laughs> we don't get a lot from Francine, just no. that she's no. not... Barbara, which really that's the most I could have asked for. I was gonna say, I thought you would um, be happy. <laughs> <laughs> but really, that's the only thing I can count against it. I'm surprised that even when it went off the rails, it still worked for oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> uh I feel like if it wasn't maybe if I didn't know so much about how this was made and the crew that really did their best to work together to put this together. Maybe it would have lost me, but the fact that I'm like, man, they're just fucking, they're <laughs> doing the thing. Um, <laughs> I really appreciated it. And looking at it by the same view of Night of the Living Dead, mm-hmm. I love them both for very different ways. Like they're super, super fucking different films. Mm-hmm. But I think I'm going to score them the same. So on a scale from one to 10, apocalyptic shopping sprees mm-hmm. i'm gonna give dawn of the dead nine as well mm-hmm. apocalyptic shopping sprees right and the the big ding for night living dead <laughs> it's barb <Yeah>. That's almost, <laughs> that movie's almost a 10 for me but yeah. she fucking she just ruined it for me um this thing really it, it boils down to i i really wish i gave a shit more about them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's the only ding that i can give yeah. it but it's so much fun and like unexpected fun oh, i was yeah. not fucking expecting pies when i started this no, no i was <laughs> caught so off guard i'm like i have to put this in my script yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean that being able to juggle that and Mm-hmm. like sadness yeah. and commentary and really fucking great gore mm-hmm. it, it it kills it it, right. it does a fantastic job for that reason a lot of people put this as their favorite in the original dead trilogy right and i after sitting down watching it right right i can understand that yeah i do love night of the living dead tremendously right yeah. in fact go listen to episode 17 right now <laughs> 17 yeah if you oh can believe God, that we were wow. babies yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't judge us too harshly <laughs> i think the only thing that or the only reason i didn't give this higher than the eight is my sentimental attachment to the remake uh-huh so i'm like i can't i i i love the shit out of that movie and we will cover it someday. Oh, yeah. Man, I cannot fucking yeah. wait. I, I don't know what it is, but I love it so much. That's one of those movies I want to sit there and watch. <laughs> like I don't want to go get anything to drink. I don't like I <laughs> and I've seen it a thousand times, but I still want to watch it. It's like, that no, movie. we're in this. Yeah. yeah. His lips are looking like one of the zombies. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all from us at Pod Mortem. What would you rate Dawn of the Dead and what should we watch next? Let us know on Twitter at the Pod Mortem. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook. Be sure to follow each of us on Twitter at TravisMWH, at Blood and Smoke, and at Real Streeter84. Please consider pledging to our Patreon and stay tuned until after the music for a special thank you to our Windigo Getter patrons. And remember, while material wealth seems important in life, we are all worth the same when we're dead. Until next time. Thank you for staying tuned. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Windigo Getter patrons. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. This mm-hmm. is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we be making zombie noises? I was going to say, yeah. do we groan? What is the... Uh, it's mm-hmm. improv. Everybody sure. do what you want. <laughs> I'm dead. Very good. <laughs> you're, you're fired. <laughs> special thank you to Chris Ontiveros, Kristen Lofton, Megan Martinez, Kimberly Bass, Melanie Van Huesden, Sophie Hodson, Anthony Jerome M., Jordan Nash, Kent Morton, Guy54, Lala Thomas, Travis and Nisa Hunter, Miguel Myers ATX, Mandy, Jennifer Perez, Pierre Lombard, Allison O'Neill, Carissa, TJ Bronson, Gabrielle Trevino, Spooky Mom, Andy Teague, Applin Ontiveros, Karima Rhodes, Antonio Huerta, Kimberly Kleindienst, Will Brown, Linda, Sydney Smith, Osvaldo Soto, Jonathan Booth, 
Bobby Holmes, Donna Eason, J.D. Rizak, Molly Gerhardt, Armand Spasto, Aaron Aguirre, Eggy, William Berry, Brittany Ramatar, Charity Oxner, Amanda Six, Mandy Rainwater, Garrett Rogers, Jordan Roberts, Danielle Peralta, Dylan, Melissa Sierra, Holly Bryan, Alex Schultz, Jordan Blevins, Michelle Moore, Liz Heath, Spencer Montalvo, and Pancake the Panda. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you all so much. <laughs> Uh, that's the best I got. There that's pretty go. good. Not bad. Not bad. Just want to say we appreciate all your support and we love you, Mall. All right. <laughs> I think we're done here. All right. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs>